ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. A warm Saturday evening from Lorman, Mississippi. We're down on the reservation as the Alcorn State Braves welcome in the Panthers of Prairie View A&M in their SWAT opener. As we say hello and welcome again, everybody. Glad to be back with you with the former Howard University and NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Green. Well, this is certainly an early season litmus test for both of these teams. The big news coming out of today, Noah Johnson, the preseason SWAC Offensive Player of the Year, listed as day-to-day. -day. We could very well see Felix Harper at the helm. Yeah, that would be huge news right there. Noah Johnson brings leadership on and off the field. His calm, cool demeanor made him one of the most explosive dual threat quarterbacks in this conference. With him not being available for all corner today, that's a huge change in game plan, I believe. When you look at this junior quarterback, Fred McNair told us this week he is very comfortable. Yeah, you can tell that. They were like, if we don't have Noah, don't lose hope in us. They are really excited about Felix Harper, his ability to really run the ball. He thought he can throw the ball, make all the passes, doesn't run quite as good as Noah Johnson, but he's got that arm where he may be able to out-throw Noah Johnson. It'll be interesting to see how he performs in this game today. I'll tell you, one of the things that uh, Prairie View a and does every time their offense steps on, steps on the field, they put a test on an opposing defense, and they do it through a big three. Yeah, they have a lot of star power, I like to call it. They've got the guys that you need to have to have a successful program. Their quarterback, it all starts with him. Jalen Morton can throw the football all over the football field. He's special, more athletic than people give him credit for, given his size. And then you talk about athleticism. Dewanye Tucker is one of those edge-of-the-seat type running backs. Every time he touches the football, he can make something special happen for the Panther offensive unit. And then you toss in the six-foot-three-inch transfer from the University of Oregon, Christian Wallace. And it's easy to see why this Prairie View A&M offense is one of the most explosive in the country. You speak on the other side of the ball for Alcorn State, the SWAC preseason defensive player of the year and Solomon Muhammad and this is a tough Braves defense. It comes down to with so much offense how you're going to stop of this and you got to have a great defensive unit and fortunately for Alcorn they have probably the best front seven in all of HBCU football. We talked about Solomon but I think it comes down to the ones. I like to call them the ones. Number 51 Daryl Henderson and number 61 Chris Monroe. Those guys absolutely stuffed the middle to free it up for the linebackers to come in and do major damage on the defensive side of the football. Eric Dooley in his second season as the Prairie View A&M head coach. He is a great offensive mind. His group is putting up better than 30 points a game, 32 to be exact. We'll see if he can stress Fred McNair's defense as McNair in his fourth season as the Alcorn State head coach, the 2018 SWAC coach of the year. And what I'm gonna say about both coaches, Dooley was overdue getting a head coaching job, and I think Prairie View is definitely trending in the right direction. Fred McNair at Alcorn, replacing Jay Hobson wasn't an easy task, but he's proven to be a better coach than I think a lot of people anticipated. We see in the yellow, gold, and purple for Prairie View A&M, Alcorn won the toss and the Braves will receive the kick. And that's Javen Morrison, and Morrison collecting the ball across the 20-yard line and tossed out just around the 25, and that's where the Braves' offense will get things going. As Justin Jones was in on the tackle. Now the big question mark is we expect to see Felix Harper running out onto the field as he finished the game last week when Noah Johnson went down with an injury back against McNeese. And trotting onto the field is number two and purple, Felix Harper, the redshirt junior out of Fairburn, Georgia. One of the things that gets excitement in them when you talk about Alcorn, is the quick release. And so you see the intangibles. I mean, jo Noah Johnson's not really big either, so the size is similar, similar, but the quick release that Felix Harper brings, they like the ability to call that. When you've got a, a quarterback with a quick release, look for them to try and spread the ball sideline to sideline. A lot of passes behind the line of scrimmage to get it to the playmakers in space in a hurry. 
just past the 30 yard line after the penalty after that kick in. The first look at Deshaun Waller who was upended. Waller was taken down by Darius Campbell who is known as their version of the honey badger for the Panthers. He's that guy that can make big plays. He tackles at the line of scrimmage, behind the line of scrimmage. Transfer from Colorado State University. They think he's been that missing defender that they needed to have to shore up this defensive unit. Second and 10 now after no game. The lefty Harper finds his man, number 82, LaCharles Pringle, for the first down. And a good sign there. You bring in your backup quarterback to start, completes his first pass. Great job by LaPringle getting open in the middle of the field and a nicely thrown ball by Felix Harper. Quick tempo here from the Braves after that 20 yard pickup. Out to the right, Nico Duffy, the true freshman out of Tampa, Florida. Pickup of just a couple on that carry. And for Prairie Bay and them, I want to see defensively. I think there's no question they need to make improvements on the defensive side of the ball. They have to win on first down. You can't give up five and six yards every first down and expect to have success winning. And one thing that surprised me in watching film in Prairie View, they're right where you expect them to be. Like if you're an offensive coordinator, you draw up a play, say, get to the linebacker second level. Well, guess what? They're able to get to the linebacker second level. They've got to mix it up a little bit and have a little flavor in their defense. Nico Duffy flanked to the left after that six-yard pickup. Felix Harper with time looking downfield finds Chris Blair. Chris Blair, the senior out of Louisville, Mississippi, a two-year starter for this group. And this is a great job. He talked about Nico Duffy, the freshman there. Good job of blocking backside. Watch him go over to the right side and cut number six, Story Jackson, giving his quarterback a little bit extra time and able to make the completion. And continuing to move quick, the Braves offense feeling like they're rolling, and this is the quick start that they wanted to see as we see an injured player on the field for the Pixon is down. Jackson is a Juco transfer, came into the program last year from safety in the spring to that Will linebacker position. We believe that stronger agricultural systems and practices result in a stronger Mississippi. The Alcorn State University. So it appears to be holding his knee as the trainers are tending to him on the field. Prairie View coming in with the matching record of Alcorn State, both with one win and two losses. And we'll tell you a little bit more about the teams on the other side of the break. Come back with us to Lorman, Mississippi. More driven. Back here at Jack Spinks Marino Chasm Stadium on the campus of Alcorn State University. We're back in play, 30 yard line, and the Braves going with Felix Harper. Harper with another completion, and LaCharles Pringle finds his way into the end zone. 30 yard score for the Braves. And they got off to a red hot start on their first drive, Jay. They may look easy, and that's the problem that Prairie View has on defense. They don't have a lot of flavor, vanilla coverage. Great job recognizing the weak side linebacker on the blitz, knowing it's man-to-man -man coverage, blown coverage there. Nice athletic move by LaCharles Pringle and in for the score in a hurry. Well, I also enjoyed watching Felix Harper just maneuver in the pocket. He didn't seem rushed, stayed steady, calm, and delivered the ball. Yeah, he, he got away with one. They had the weak side backer coming on his blind side, but he was so athletic, able to move up in the pocket, but it was a great job of keeping his vision downfield to see the open receiver for the touchdown score. Corey McCullough, the senior, back to attempt the extra point. And it's good. So a 7-0 start for the Braves in their SWAC opener against Prairie View A&M. And this is the start that we heard from the coaches this week that the Braves wanted to see under offensive coordinator Elliot Ratton. He said, we've got to get up quickly. Well, yeah, the question would be, could they afford to get into a, a shootout versus Prairie View A&M? We think Prairie View is going to have the ability to score some points. But the all-corn offense matched the challenge going against a defense that struggled keeping teams out of the end zone. And they come out with an impressive opening drive to 
to take the early lead. And I think the conversation was how would this Alcorn State team respond after, again, Noah Johnson going down last week. Felix Harper was 14 of 29, 433 yards, had a pair of TDs and a couple of INTs as well, and they looked mighty comfortable with him under center. And you, you see there, you see the linebacker come from the outside. Once he misses, then the whole secondary becomes exposed and a great job of changing direction by Pringle to get into the end zone. Just over two minutes for that scoring possession for the Braves and back to receive the kick for the Panthers. Number one, who's electric in gold, Dewanye Tucker. Tucker, who's still on his feet, finding room and brought down just near the 30-yard line. A penalty marker is on the field, but you mentioned, Jay, one of those guys who is ever so explosive. The officiating crew for today, Tony Ross, the referee. That was unfortunate because it was a really good job of getting good field position on the return by Tucker. So it backs them up, and instead of a start of the 30, we'll back up a little bit. And Jalen Morton, the 6'4 redshirt senior out of Arlington, Texas, a guy who's got a big arm back there. He can spin it, as they like to say in today's terminology. He can really spin it. Ball just electric when it comes off his arm. And as I mentioned before, moves very well for a quarterback of his size. And throws it right into the hands of the Braves. It's taken away by Quinterio Cole. Cole, a first team all swack selection a season ago. Had a pick six in last year's game against Southern. And here gets his first INT of the 2019 season. They better slow down all corn in these fans. When those fans start doing the chop, Good things are happening for their football team. Just leads the receiver too much. That ball there was thrown too far ahead of Tony Mullins. And Cole was actually in bad position. Was coming up to make a tackle and was rewarded with a gift in his lap in the form of an interception. Well, this is a group who had the leading defense in the SWAC and among the tops in the FCS in several categories, including total defense, sacks, and tackles for loss, all top 10. So the Braves have excellent field position to start this second drive and quickly out to the right. And how about it for Nico Duffy and Duffy coming out of the backfield, pushed out by DePriest Taylor. Same look, they continue to try and bring pressure from Harper's backside, which would be the right side. He's recognizing it and making the right decision with the football. Harper. Quickly out and in and out of the hands of Nigel Wood, the intended target, the tight end out of Poplarville, Mississippi. That's when you got to catch that ball. Nigel Wood, good job by Harper, recognizing the defense, made a quick decision. When they talk about a quick release. I like the fact that I see this young quarterback making quick decisions. He knows where he's going with the football. He anticipates well. Impressive start for Felix Harper early playing in his third game this season, only completed one pass in that game against Southern Miss to open up the 2019 campaign and then came in that second quarter. Last game against McNeese. Tough loss on the road last weekend. A quick pause on the field as a correction to the game clock is being adjusted. All Corn State, they're looking to repeat as SWAC champions. They made it all the way to the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl last year before falling to North Carolina A&T, but you know they're setting their sights on Atlanta once more. They've been, you know, one of those teams, I mean, between Alcorn and Grambling, they've had it on lock, but for the differences, Grambling won a Celebration Bowl, Alcorn has not tasted victory yet. And you can get the feeling that's what motivates them. Off-season workouts, during the plays, uh, conditioning, lifting weights. They're not happy just winning the SWAT and going to the Celebration Bowl. 
They want to win the Celebration Bowl and become black college national champion. Fred McNair was on the staff when the Braves made it to the first Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl back in 2015 when they again faced the common opponent in North Carolina a &T. He was an assistant at the time under Jay Hobson. And just too aggressive there. <laughs> and, and thus far, DePriest Taylor and the Panthers defense just looking out of sorts. I'm going to ask you the question. The defense in my Denny Green, old Denny Green voice, they are who we said they were. They're a defense that gives up 34 points a game. Pretty vanilla. They don't have a lot of swag to that defense, and I think that right now they're a defensive liability anytime you have this defense on the field. So they just gave five yards to Alcorn State, who is now in the red zone. Second and five. The handoff. And quickly, look at Nico Duffy. Duffy is just so quick, tough to contain him. A three-star recruit out of Tampa, and he's really asserted himself into this offense. It's easy picking. I mean, they're bringing run-stopping blitzes. They blitz both linebackers, but they both overrun it. They're right where you want them to be. It becomes a foot race. They're fortunate he did not get into the end zone. But how big was the hole for Nico Duffy to get through? Some tied for first in FCS in terms of red zone scoring 100%. Six of six is Trey Turner now in the backfield. He gets the carry up the middle, make it seven for seven. Braves once more score. And the Braves chop starting early here. Early and often, early and often. And if Prairie View doesn't get their act together, it can become a very long day here on the reservation. Goal line defense, you should not be able to get to the goal line this easy. Linebacker two yards into the end zone. Step up, make the hit, control the line of scrimmage. This is a team that is still searching for answers defensively when you talk about Prairie View a and The extra point is good, so it's 14-0. As Trey Turner barrels his way for the three-yard score. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. And in part by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Good look at what they call the reservation as Alcorn State up 14 nothing. not over, just over three minutes gone by and quickly the Braves are on the board. That last score compliments of a Quinterio Cole interception and it was less than a minute before Alcorn State found the end zone once more. Well, there have been a total of 12 offensive plays running this game, one interception, by Prairie View, all for an 11 plays with two touchdowns. They've run 11 plays and got to the end zone twice. Normally, it takes an 11 play drive to score once, but the Braves are focused right now and out to the early lead. We'll get another chance to see Dewanye Tucker and perhaps the Panthers can answer, and he's certainly one of those spark plugs that can help them along. Tucker, the senior out of Terrell, Texas, on the right side, cutting back, continuing to find open space, but a penalty marker is thrown out onto the field during the return. Regardless of the penalty, Tucker's special. <laughs> Did you see him change his directions mm -hmm. that quiet, you know, quick, uh, quick change direction and the key is that's going to help him out next level when NFL talk teams talk about him you ask if he had the talent to play in NFL they say because he's on special teams he does second penalty on the Panthers on a kickoff return and every time Tucker does something a little special they lose yards So their first and only offensive play of the day resulted in an interception. The handoff to Dewanye Tucker, and Tucker 
runs into several purple jerseys. This Tucker is one of those players who I remember watching last season, Jay, and just saying, wow, where did he come from? <laughs> He's special. Reminds me a little bit of Tariq Cohen. Not saying he's that level, but has that type of a talent and ability. Morton with time finds the big target in Tristan Wallace. Wallace, the 6'3 redshirt junior who came over from the University of Oregon a season ago. He was brought down by Javon Morrison. He absolutely took the swat by storm last year. They weren't expecting him to be as good as he would. Had a breakout season. I'm trying to continue that in this 2019 campaign. Man in motion is Tony Mullins. The handoff to Caleb Broach. And Broach picks up just a couple. The senior out of Rockwall, Texas. When you talk to Alcorn State defensive coordinator, said before, what do you do against this offense with so much star power? He said you have to be patient, meaning they're so reliant on getting the big play that they don't do a lot of little plays. The quick pass to Prince Johnson, and Johnson has room and more. Got a man to beat, and he is pushed out of bounds just across the 50-yard line. Johnson, transfer over from Tulane, picks up 28. And just a wide receiver screen, and Chris Johnson, one of the fastest wide receivers on this team, accelerates in a hurry to pick up the first down. And one thing about it, about this Prairie View A&M offense, it is a quick strike offense. They can score to get back in this game in a hurry as they finally cross midfield. Well, they will have to continue to be on the attack to dig out of this 14-yard deficit as the pass is complete to Jordan Jones. Hole in on the tackle. Jones is a player who's in his fifth season. Graduate, came over from Grambling State. And quickly, Dewanye Tucker, and Tucker is snuffed out by a couple of purple jerseys. The first one there. Now the chess match begin. Third in an obvious passing situation. Do you bring pressure if you're all cornered? Do you stick with your philosophy? Lay off and see if you can be patient. And if Prairie View has what it takes to be patient enough with their play selection. Third and six. Now the pressure coming. Morton moving out of the pocket, finds Tucker, and Tucker good enough for the first down and more. And that was just football, though. Good pressure by the ones that we talked about, Daryl Henderson and Chris Monroe, flushing Morton out of the pocket. Morton getting the ball to his playmaker, Duane Tucker, and Tucker doing the rest himself to keep the drive alive and pick up the first down. He checks out after that pickup of 13 yards. More importantly, continuing to move the sticks for the Panthers. The eighth play of the drive coming up. Morton with time and a penalty flag, and this one is likely to come back. They call it holding, but I'm going to call this a money. Take a look here. Right side, right tackle right here. You think you can make this call? Tell me is this holding right here. Uh, whoa, 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 where are you going? Get back here. <laughs> Turned him inside out. Eric Dunn called for the holding penalty. The handoff. And Caleb Broach up the middle. And once oh, more, on. some laundry on the field. Braylon Hollis was in on the stop of Broach. You know, this is already starting to look like. Okay, I'm going to hold my comment. I'm going to hold my comment for now and just wait a little bit. A pickup of seven for Broach. Now, in these situations, second and long, I want DeWane Tucker on the field. Broach is more their power running back. Keep Tucker on the field. He's such an explosive player that the defense has to account for. Once more. Broach carrying the ball, and he's bottled up by Chris Hart and company. 
Hart, number 28 in purple, transferred over from the University of Utah. Let's just say the Utes. One thing to note, they bring in number seven, Christian Mosley in the backfield to play running back. He was a 200 meter high school champion. He's explosive, so if you're all court state, you might want to pay attention to number seven in the backfield. I think they bring him in the game for a reason. He's a nice change up to Tucker, the coaches told us. Instead, he's in pass protection. Morton with time, finding his man wide open to the right. Okay. Is Jordan Jones. Well, a great job by Jalen Morton. After the interception, he's coming out throwing darts right now. The tight end, Jordan Jones. You see him just do a wheel route, number 83, top of your screen, out, then up. Second level throw. Nice throw, nice route, big first down for Prairie View AM. That pass and catch, good for 38 yards. And now the Panthers continuing to creep closer and closer to the end zone. Morton tries to find over the middle and is picked off once more. Keyron Kinsler. His first INT of the season. Coaches said he came in ready and he was definitely standing at attention. He brings it in, INT. It all comes down to a single defining moment. When a plan stops being a plan and gets set into motion. Today's Merrill can help you get there. With the people, tools, and personalized advice to help turn your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? Let's go back to that interception in the end zone for Alcorn. Take a look at Prairie View. They're trying to fool you with some deception. They're bunching everything in with the two tight ends in tight with this misdirection, but the spacing. Look how close both receivers are to each other, allowing the safety that wasn't even guarding the intended target to come over and make the easy interception. I think they got too cute for their own good in that situation. They had a good drive going, but it was the spacing. Two guys in the same area of the field, and Jalen Morton just threw the ball up for grabs. Alcorn State's defense with two interceptions today. They only had one interception through the three games coming in to their SWAC opener. Alcorn State starting from the 20. Nico Duffy with the carry running to the right side. And he's near the first down marker. Good run. I, I just don't like what I'm seeing for Prairie View defense. It's like, where's the sense of urgency? It's like their defense allows the offensive player to block them. Then they go along with the block. They're like, okay, I'm being blocked. Somebody else come up. No, get shed a block, get off it, and make a tackle. A quick strike out to Tim McNair. And that picks up the first down. McNair, the coach's nephew. So that McNair name continues to live on in so many ways here, but you got to have McNair here yeah. at Alcorn State. As long as I've been covering the school, they've always had McNair <laughs> somewhere on the roster. Fred McNair, of course, played here. The original era McNair, his late brother Steve McNair. Up to gain some prominence for the university and a nice target once again for LaCharles Pringle, just a steady guy for this Braves receiving core. Pickup of 19. And just a good job of finding the soft spot in a very soft zone coverage. I, I just don't see the fight. I mean, first down, that was a simple first down call, but still picked up three, almost four yards. Somebody on this Prairie View A&M defense in a yellow jersey, somebody has to step up and be a difference maker. You know, they thought it was going to be number six, Corey Jackson. He's battling injury, but they're just too easy to block. They're right where you see them. And 
Alcorn's having fun on offense right now. <laughs> and this is a team that led the SWAC in offense and defense a season ago. And continuing to bounce off defenders is Trey Turner. Just a real physical back for the Braves. Gain of eight, with just under five minutes to go in the opening period. All Corn State with a 14 nothing lead against the visiting Panthers. This is the type of game we thought we would see. Very methodical, trying to eat up the clock if you're All Corn, slow down the pace of the game, but they're having so much success. And Harper once again finding a favorite target of his and Chris Blair. Blair, one of those players who had a touchdown late in the game last week against McNeese. And that was good for 16. And again, quick tempo here. And Trey Turner is knocked out of bounds. Jalen Harris in on the tackle. One of those cornerbacks competing for a job for the Panthers. Braves back in the red zone. Harper going for Blair once more, and that ball was batted down. Good defense there by Jalen Harris. Yeah. Good job by Harris. Elevate in getting the ball at its highest point. If he watches this football and doesn't leave his feet, this is the touchdown. A great job extending that left hand for the pass breakup in the end zone. So third and five, remember, the Braves are perfect in the red zone this season. And that is close to the sticks, and that's good enough for a first down as Pringle once more snags it in. And once again, I'm very impressed by the decision making of Felix Harper. Third and short, getting the most out of his pre snap read and delivering accurately thrown passes to keep the drive alive. First and goal now, and Harper, as you mentioned, has done a good job of leading this offense. Again, the coach is very comfortable with him running things. Nico Duffy, they like the ball in his hands as well. But a flag is on the field. Well, Jay, to be honest with you, we see all, we saw a lot of this uh, Thursday night, Thursday night's game. <laughs> That being the NFL, Jay. <laughs> yeah, that was flag fest on Thursday. Yeah. You see number 62 trying to get outside. And the defender takes himself in there. Uh, right there, you got to let it go. You already had Duffy on the edge with Bayer. A little bit more savvy. I think Kevin Hall would have released him and might not have got called for that penalty. The first penalty of the day for all corn state you see felix harper's numbers eight of ten he's been rather efficient back there wiggling his way and brought down by number 20 trey shot smith for the sack that's his fourth of the season and they brought up a little pressure and they finally got to the quarterback disrupted felix harper Here's one there. They didn't fall for the misdirection. Good job of keeping outside contained by Smith. And able to get the tackle behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Ball spotted at the 27-yard line. Second and goal for the Braves. Remember, they've scored in both trips to the red zone, Trey Turner, hard running to the left. And dying inside the 20 yard line, that was good for eight, Isaiah Washington in on the stop. What I mean by so easy to block, every purple jersey was engaged with the yellow jersey. Like everybody. I just think the yellow jerseys are too easy to block and they're able to run the football at will. The Panthers looking for a big stop here. It would be a win for them if they were able to hold the Braves for perhaps just three. Man to man coverage across the board. Take a deep shot. Instead, they hand it off to Turner. And Turner is bottled up. Your thoughts on that play call? I, I understand what they were trying to do because 
it's been easy to run the football on them. But in that case there, you saw solid man-to-man -man coverage across the board. I would have taken a shot throwing the ball in the end zone. But then let's also think maybe Fred McNair knows that, hey, my kicker kicks the ball a little bit better from the left hash compared to the right hash. Wanted to get the angle, pick up a couple yards to get him in his comfort zone. 33-yard attempt for Corey McCullough. McCullough is able to knock it through. We'll kick off your week three NFL Sunday with the countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app at 10 a.m. Eastern. Patrick Mahomes breaks down the art of the no-look pass, plus an exclusive look at Deshaun Watson's off-season trip around the world and all the early breaking stories, injury updates, you got mossed along with previews of each game right up to kick off. I tell you, we were having a conversation, Jay, before we went on air about just how exciting a guy like Patrick Mahomes is and how electric he can be. He is the future at quarterback of the NFL. Yeah, I think one of the most overused terms you'll hear is, oh, he's got arm talent. No, Patrick Mahomes, he's got arm talent. There's a difference. He's got a tier one arm, and you probably only have about four or five tier one arms in the NFL. Mahomes has got one of them, and I mean, he's just a guy that, boy, you can sit back and say, boy, that boy can throw. <laughs> just old fashioned, he can throw. What did they say on coming to America? That boy good. That boy good. <laughs> The touchback and the Panthers will get things going on offense. Good look there at Eric Dooley, second year coach for a Prairie View AM and six and eight record there, but I think for him, the time at Grambling State and the Southern, I told everybody. He's put more points on anybody in this conference than anybody else. Whether he was at Southern, when he was at Arkansas Pine Bluff, now at Prairie View A&M, you talked about him being one of the uh, offensive geniuses in the conference. That's him, and he's finally getting a shot at the head coach, and they're excited about him in Texas. And Morton with the completion quickly out to Tristan Wallace. Pickup of 11. But you go back to Dooley and a guy who graduated from Southern, but also had a chance to coach under or play under some terrific guys. Pete Richardson among them, Eddie Robinson, Monty Coleman, a great mind as well on the defensive side of things. And I just always say he's put up points every place he's coached. That should be a flag. Oh, wow. Jawan Taylor on the coverage, holding his hands up as, as if he had nothing to do with it. He, he's trying to sell it the other way, and he won it. Yeah, how, how do you miss that? You know, normally I'm poor, but look at the end of this. He grabs him by his waist when he's trying to elevate. You see him pull him, twist him by the wayside. Unless they're saying it wasn't a catchable ball, but in that case, the back judge would give you the signal by tapping his hat. Just a missed call, tough break for Prairie View A&M. Tony Mullins was the intended target, so brings up third and two. And a timeout is taken on the field by Prairie View A&M. Well, Dooley, in his second season, we were there when he picked up his first win as a head coach against North Carolina Central in last year's MEAC SWAC Challenge. But when it comes to the big dogs of the conference and Alcorn State and Southern and Grambling State, you compare that to the rest of the SWAC opponents, there's a big disparity. And that's why everybody was excited because they thought they got over the hump. Prairie View actually beat Grambling in that State Fair Classic in Texas. And everybody said, this is Prairie View's year. They didn't handle success well and faltered down the later half of the schedule. The key is going to be consistency. So they have expectations now in Prairie View, but can they finish the job? That's what people want to know. And this is why I thought a game like this was a signature game to say, are you ready to really compete and be considered one of the elite teams in the conference? In order to do that, you have to beat an elite team, and they haven't had much success doing that. When I watch Eric Dooley, and this is just a personal point, I think they've gotten the right guy, though. I think he is the one that can lead them there. That's 
Tucker on the carry and just short of the first down. So decision time here as we might have a measurement. You go for it. And you're on the road. You're trying to get a conference win on the road. You're down by 17 early. You have to say, we, we've got to try and pick up this first down to put some points on the board. And especially when your defense really isn't that good. <laughs> so you have to be a little bit more aggressive with your offensive play selection, play call. Okay, so when you look up front then at your halls, your offensive line for Prairie View, everybody across the board is pretty much 6'3 and taller. Do you like that matchup in the trenches against the Braves defense? No, but you got to face them sooner or later, and you have to challenge them and say, I don't care what type of size they have, and we know that all four states got a good defense in front. You have to challenge the team. Short yard situation. Is all about who wants it more, and you have to challenge your offense to say, Go out there and get me these two inches we may need. If you can't get that, we don't deserve to win, but it's all for now. <laughs> got the first down and keep the chains moving. Well, outside of those two interceptions, Prairie View A&M has been able to move the ball a little bit down the field against the Braves. We know they can move. They've got a good offense, but what they haven't been able to do is that quick strike explosive play. Prairie View likes to hit you 50, 60-yard big plays, and that's what Alcorn's done a good job of eliminating. They're giving up all the underneath stuff, but they're saying we're not giving you anything deep. With those plays that we call explosives, 20 yards or more. Kalen Riles with the reception, had a touchdown last week against Nichols State and Morton. Trying to find Tolly Mullins, and Mullins was just jacked up a little bit. He was grabbed and brought down. You see the penalty marker fly out. Calvante Key was in on the coverage. The officiating crew with the call here. Pass interference. Defense, number 15. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So now you find the Panthers. Still in a good position. They've got momentum. 133 yards picked up already in this first quarter. The idea is to finish things off. 13 seconds to go in the opening frame. And Tucker, juke moving all around, picks up about four or five. And then some extracurricular with Chris Johnson and some of the members of the Braves secondary. Crowd doesn't like it too much. Chris Johnson got away with throwing a punch. He should be ejected. And he threw a punch at another player that was coming, and the whole stadium saw it. Well, that's an odd close to the quarter, as you mentioned. Johnson maybe doing a little bit too much, doesn't get called from it. We're talking about doing too much, well, a whole lot was happening on the defensive side of things as the Braves pick up two interceptions, led the points. They're up 17-0. College football presented by McDonald's. The start of the second quarter in Alcorn State on top of Prairie View AM in their SWAC opener. When you compare the numbers between the two teams, total yards not too far off, but the pass yards for Prairie View AM, they've been able to throw the ball. They've also found it in the hands of the defenders. So that was TJ Stark they brought in a quarterback who the head coach Eric Dooley told me we would see him in the game. He's got a package of plays they want to use him for. Dual threat guy, more of a run pass option type offense when he's in the game. 
And Starks once more with the carry brought down by Michelle Heron. Starks, who started out his career in Kansas, moved over to Juco and found his way at Prairie View A&M. Now this is a fourth down situation. One yard to go for the Panthers. This is big. Remember earlier we were mm -hmm. wondering if he would go for it if yep. he was a couple inches short. Well, Find yourself in that position for real, for real now. He realizes what's at stake on the road. They need to put some points on the board. Trying desperately to keep the drive alive. Three for seven on fourth downs and Starks stood up. He's close to it. Looked like they may have given him the spot. Kevron Kinsler in on the tackle. Giving him the first down, mm -hmm. but that's one where you're TJ Stark. You have to know where you're on the field. You're not running sideways at all. He made a cut and tried to break to the outside. Go straight ahead. Pick up the yard's need. Don't leave it to chance. Tucker in motion. Starks. Rolling to his right, trying to find somebody. Trips up, and a penalty marker is on the field. I'm going to be another holding. Holding. Offense, number 50. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. And you see what's Deion Jones. The John Jones, who's normally the left tackle, moved over to the right tackle, and quarterback escapes out the pocket, lose track where your quarterback is. Easy call for the official to make. So Jalen Morton back in at quarterback. Morton with time, trying to go down the field with Chris Johnson along the sideline and just throws it out of bounds. And that is what you call, that's that impatience that they have. They, they don't like playing this type of patient game. And they're going to take the deep shots because that's just what they do. Flag on the field once more. We've seen a lot of penalty markers out already out in this one. Unsportsmanlike conduct is number 50 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, and that's number 50, first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. You know, these are the penalties that drive coaches crazy, and when we talked with Eric Dooley earlier this week, you know, he mentioned the fact that his team needs to be more disciplined. Felt like they picked up too many penalties last week against Nichols State and wanted to see his guys cut down on them today. Five already for the Panthers. Morton going downfield, trying to find. Wow. Well, there were a couple of defenders around there, and Tony Mullins was the one who came up with it. How does that happen on <laughs> second and 35? Prairie View responds with the 68-yard touchdown. Second and 35. <laughs> we said it's a quick strike offense. They can score in a hurry. Good job by Morton standing strong in the pocket. And had two receivers to choose from. Two yellow jerseys got behind purple jerseys. That shouldn't happen. And <laughs> let's Coach Dooley say my prayers have been answered. <laughs> so the Panthers able to get on the board. <laughs> with that quick strike score as Tony Mullins was the man. The walk on coming up big in a big moment for the Panthers. Back here at Jack Spinks Marino Chasm Stadium on the reservation, Alcorn State leading 17 to 7 and you look at the job that Fred McNair has done since taking over in 2016 they've won five 
SWAC East titles in a row to go along with that a SWAC championship last year. The question mark is what can they do this year? And look, they're poised to make another run for the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. They look really good. I mean, you know, we know the defense is there, and I think something that Coach McNair doesn't get credit for is how physical his team is. They are always prepared to play, and they are a physical bunch, and they're physical, but they also have patience and it's discipline. Nico Duffy, who appeared to didn't have much discipline as he touched that ball, made up for it on that return. Nico Duffy with the speed. He's a great track athlete back in high school, state qualifier and long jump and some more extracurricular activity going on between these two teams. A lot of pushing and shoving, Jay. It's conference football, Tim. <laughs> it's conference. They know what's on the line. And I think if you're Prairie View a &M, coming in here, maybe they had the decision that they weren't going to get pushed around. Because when Alcorn's beating you, they're beating up on you more physical than you are normally. And now I'm starting to see a little bit of fight, a little fight back from Prairie View and see if possibly the defense can make a stop and get that offense back on the field. They really do need a three and out right now. We saw the Braves rely on Nico Duffy more in the backfield in most of that first quarter, but Deshaun Waller, who's back on the SWAC newcomer of the year a season ago, had 1,200 yards. We'll see how he flourishes in today's offense. He seems to be a little, little bit ginger. Doesn't seem to be himself. Like, not 100%. When he's 100%, he is a downhill runner with explosive cuts. But he seems to be hobbled a little bit. Maybe not at 100% tonight. Alcorn State has scored on two drives. Had a field goal in their last possession. And there's Waller trying to get to the outside. And he's brought down, tripped up by Logan Jackson. Jackson, one of those returning starters on defense for the Panthers, a loss of one. Right now, Prairie View and m if they can come up with a stop here on third down, have an opportunity to maybe take some momentum in this football game, which they haven't had. Now I'm starting to see that defense get a little bit hungrier as Harper looking to the sideline. Haven't seen themselves in many third down situations today. One for two. They found Pringle's been the guy they've gone to in these situations so far. Well, timeout taken by Alcorn State with the play clock winding down. <laughs> When you look at this Alcorn State team and you think back to last season and what they were able to do, it was it was a big deal when they made it to the championship game. Not because that they were there, but it was because it was the first time a SWAC school hosted the actual championship game on a school site. to the outside, and he finds the end zone! Waller, right up the middle, Deshaun Waller, he's got the jet zone! Oh, baby! Noah Johnson! Back here on the field, and Harper finds Juan Anthony. First time he was targeted today, the red shirt sophomore out of Woodville, Mississippi. Pick up a three. And I want to go back to that. I mean, how electric was that place <laughs> yeah. last year yeah. for that SWAC championship? Mm -mm -mm. I mean, the electricity is still in the air here. What a tremendous football game. And I think I said it during that broadcast. Like, I can't remember a game having that much excitement in the stadium than that SWAC championship last year. First punt of the night for all Corn State. Tulloch gets it away and in to receive it is Tony Mullins, the fair catch. And that's where the Panthers will start things after the 37-yard punt just across the 30-yard line. I'll tell you what, Alcorn had a lot of fun in that first quarter. Now it's not really fun because you've got a, an offense that's starting to find their groove. They're getting ready to come on the field with a chance to make this game closer. The folks here 
have watched this thing right before him. This defense is finally on its heels, where there's a lot of pressure on them to get a stop now. Well, Prairie View A&M saw their first two drives end with picks. And in that last scoring possession, 11 plays, 75 yards, and a 68-yard score <laughs> from Tony Mullins. And continuing to just spin off the of defenders is Dewanye Tucker. I mean, that's why I call him an edge-of-your-seat runner. Simple play first down, but it was explosive. You saw the agility, the balance, the ability to make the first defender miss. And more importantly, a trade of a good running back, tough to bring to the ground. So in Madden, what was that? A circle? <laughs> The circle, circle. 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 <laughs> and the RPO offense the from the Panthers as Morton holds on to it. I mean, this is that previous play. Turns on the Jets, sets up the defender. Nice spin move. <laughs> that two grabbed nothing but air. And you talk about a guy in the open space, tough to bring down. DeWane Tucker, to me, has been one of the guys that's been a joy to watch play because he brings excitement every game. Out of Terrell, Texas. The set, 5'5", 180 pounds. And the Panthers spend their second timeout of the first half. You go back to the start of last year for Prairie View A&M. They played Rice close. They got the win against NCCU in the MEAC SWAC Challenge. They were able to notch a big victory against Grambling State. And then things kind of fell apart at, towards the end of the season. They didn't finish, and that's why, you know, it's one thing when you're always trying to chase that. I always go back to my Ric Flair analogy, you know, you train so hard to be the man, but then what you realize, once you beat the man, the hard part is staying the man. And Prairie View had a chance to be the man in the SWAC western part of the division last year. After the victory of Grambling, they could not sustain it, and I think they didn't handle success well. Morton with pressure in his face. That was Solomon Muhammad coming his way, but he was able to get it off. And Jordan Jones fighting for tough yards, holds on to it, and wrapped up by Kieran Kinsler. And the scout report was accurate. You asked the Prairie View A&M coaches who's got the best hands on the team. They say it's Jordan Jones. And right there, tremendous job of focusing on the tip ball to come up with a huge completion for the Panthers. Moves the sticks and keeps this drive going. Morton with time, finds his man, and what a hit laid on Tony Mullins. This and that may is. very well be targeting, folks. That is what they're trying to take out of the game. The violent hit downfield. And this is definitely be reviewed by the officials here, I'm sure. Targeting against the defense, number 15. His previous play is on the further review. So while the officials review will step aside quickly, come back with us to the reservation. The officials are looking to see if a targeting call will stay. The targeting call on the field, what the outcome of that will be a dangerous hit that involves launching, a strong thrust, a severe strike. And, and Jay, you first ask yourself, okay, is it forcible to the head on a defenseless player? Is he defenseless? A wide receiver defensive, not looking at the defender. I believe this is a defenseless wide receiver. He's focusing on the ball, whereas the hitter is focusing on the wide receiver drop ball there I think we saw that second element there I think it was a defenseless player yep. so Kinsler has been ejected from the ball game and, and I think you know it goes to that second element of what we saw which I think leads to the ejection, Kieran Kinsley. So once again, it was a targeting 
foul called on the field. He's been ejected. And we're back to play. Tristan Wallace collects the pass from Jalen Morton. Jawan Taylor brought him down. And there's an injured Brave on the field. Trying to see who that is. Could be, that's Chris Hart. Starting defensive end for the Braves. Just like that, you got an injury to your starting defensive end. Your starting free safety is now out of the game. Targeting rule. And you're facing an offense that's finally starting to show what they can do. Things got interesting quickly here in Norman, Mississippi. Yeah, you watched that first half and you said, oh, you know, this could be a long evening for Prairie View A&M. But the Panthers staying right with it. They have a quick strike offense, as you mentioned. And they're working their way back into it in a correction. And it was Alan Bruce who went down. Good to see him being helped off the field. And you see there, top block on the line of scrimmage. No, that's hard. I need to get him back. Transfer from Utah, which we talked about early. But we, we know it's going to happen because this game got physical. <laughs> it got physical. Prairie View started answering the call. They were counterpunching, if you want to use that term. And had an opportunity to get back in this game. The handoff to Tucker and Tucker. Right up the middle, 5-5, five, five, but not afraid to go right up inside. Tackles. And there was absolutely nothing there. When he got that ball, I thought it was going to be a tackle for a loss. Instead, he gets small, explodes, and turns a negative play into a positive play. Third and a couple with just over nine minutes to go in the half. Four down territory, I think. And handoff to Broach, and Broach, who is known as that power back to pick up the tough yards, does that and more. Gain of nine. And a good job by Prairie View A&M keeping this offense on the field. We're starting to see some signs where they're starting to push the pile, push the defensive line of all corner round. Morton surveying and delivers the target right on cue. Kalel Jawan Chris. Kalel Jawan, excuse me, Chris, the 21-yard score. They call him Clyde, but listen to how quiet the <laughs> reservation got. Remember how I was telling you in the when you talk about in the open when the crowd's going, the band's going, good things are happening for the home team. Well, look how quickly Jalen Morton and his Panthers have silenced. I mean, absolutely silenced this Alcorn crowd. Chris with his first touchdown of the season. The junior out of New Orleans. And bobbled snap there. And the point after attempt is no good. But here come the Panthers. Jalen Morton throwing dimes on the money. You blink, you missed it. We got a ball game. Well, here's the deal. If you're driving to Lorman, Mississippi, there's a good chance you got to go down Natchez Trace. Good look at Owens Creek there as we've got a ball game, folks. 17-13 to what's, go with 8.32 to go in this first what's half. What's the rule, though, Tiff? Yeah. What's the rule I talked to you about the trace? <laughs> I just don't drive fast down the trace and don't drive at night. There you go. You mm. take the trace during the day. Yeah. Don't drive it at night because you will see more deer than <laughs> cars. <laughs> I'm not going down the trace because I've gotten a couple of speeding tickets going down that way. So I've learned my lesson. Now what do you do now here if you're all corn state to get back on track offensively? I thought that Prairie View made some adjustments 
and the adjustments they made, they kind of hugged up on the line of scrimmage a little bit more. So they're taking away the short throws from Felix Harper, and they're going to force him to throw the ball deep if he's going to have any success. Pringle in motion, and Harper quickly out to Nico Duffy, and Duffy, they knew exactly where he was going to be. The first man there was Trey Shad Smith. Loss of four. And that, they play into their hand. They're taking away the short stuff. So now what Felix Harper's going to have to do, he's going to have to show the ability to throw the football down the field. And do you feel like it was a simple game plan for Harper just to get those quick hits out there to get him comfortable in a rhythm and not ask him to do too much? I think that's what they like for him. They like the quick release, but the adjustment has been made, and they're just playing the game like keep everything in front of us, come up, make solid tackles. And until he proves he can throw the ball down the field, you're going to see a lot more covers like this. Just keep it in front and jump on it. Demarcus Robinson with the stop. How and here's the deal. Yeah, this is a big third down for Alcorn State as the Panthers' defense really starting to attack. And that's what Eric Dooley wanted to see really on both sides of the ball is he wanted to attack this Alcorn State team. Harper. Finding his man and behind McNair and Tim McNair cannot hold on. So the Panthers defense hold. The punting unit comes on for the Braves. And we have mentioned that the Prairie View AM offense is getting rolling. And when they do, you better watch out. And you almost had the feeling that everybody in the stadium thought if we don't get this third down, next time we get the ball, we could be trailing <laughs> because it's Prairie View offense starting to find their rhythm. Color on the punt, high snap, brings it down, and it's blocked. Block punt, and Prairie View A&M may have recovered it just near the goal line as Ahmad Antoine was there. He got a hand on it. So we've seen the offense, defense, and now special teams coming through for the Panthers. Yeah, took him off site with the snap towards where they were bringing pressure. And McCullough, really not much to do. Tried to get it off, but great job by the special teams of Prairie View A&M. But it all started with a bad snap. Huge play for Prairie View A&M. And that brings up first and goal from the one yard line. And they have a chance to take their first lead of the ball game. I'm going downhill with Dewanye Tucker, not even playing around with him. The handoff to Tucker, and he's there. 19 unanswered points from Prairie View AM. And this is a shocked crowd here at. Sphinx Castle Stadium. Give credit to the boys from Texas. They came out, took a long time for them to get off the bus and show up in this football game, but when they did, the second quarter has been all Prairie View A&M. What a shift of momentum. Make it a second missed PAT in this ball game. 19 to 17. And Prairie View just like that, coming through with a big block. Give it to your playmaker. Tucker takes it in. Our week three Monday night football matchup dates back to 1932. The Bears are at FedEx Field to take on the Redskins, looking for their first W of the season. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6. Washington has dominated Chicago as of late winning 
seven straight going back to 2004 with the Bears' last win in D.C. coming in 2001. I know that Jay Gruden's on that hot seat. <laughs> he needs to get a victory. Imagine that, being on the hot seat two weeks in to the season, 16-game season. A lot of pressure on him already. A lot of question marks for him. And certainly the Braves trying to answer some questions after they gave up 19 straight. And a big return there from Morrison. And Morrison, that's a way to get a boost of the arm for your team, 39-yard kickoff return, but a penalty marker is on the field. Great job of patience by Morrison, setting up the block on the outside and able to pick up about 10 more yards with a little wiggle towards the end of that run. Tack on five more after the penalty goes against the Panthers. So to start this game, the Braves were red hot. Two touchdowns, added a field goal to that, got out to a 17-0 lead. And since then, their last two possessions have resulted in punts. Prairie View. AM has looked strong in this second quarter to take the lead. And the ball comes out, no whistle. They'll call the ball carrier down. Trey Turner picks up a few. And that's a good sign. I think what got Alcorn in trouble when they lost momentum is they stopped running the football. Alcorn football is running the football. When, they, when they're really winning, they're controlling the line of scrimmage, wearing you down. And it's good to see they're trying to get back to running the football. And just like that, a quick pass, and it was deflected by number 49, Kobe Love. Love, the sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee, says, yeah, credit me with that. And it's just still, they're throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage, and Prairie View's made it clear, we're going to keep everything in front and make the tackle. So even if that ball wouldn't have been tipped at the line of scrimmage, there were two yellow jerseys ready to make a tackle at or behind the line of scrimmage. And I just don't think all corners figured out that adjustment that Prairie View's made defensively. Third and seven, Harper on the pass, and again, broken up. Good defense there, as Chris Blair was the intended target. Jalen Harris was there as well. And Another punting situation for the Braves, and the Panthers made the adjustment. They figured it out, and they halted this Braves offense. They really have, and you have to give credit to their defensive coordinator, Henry Miller. Whatever he did to fire him up or simplify, now this is starting to look like a defensive unit. That play whistled dead before the punt got off. Flag is down on the field. All start. Offense, number 58, five yard penalty, fourth down. And now we're starting to see things kind of come undone for all corn state a little bit. And, and that's a that penalty there, although it's just five yards, as a returner, you're taught anything you catch inside the 20, just fair catch. But if you catch anything outside the 20, run. And right now you've got the return man standing on the 22 yard line. So Prairie View may have an opportunity to get a return off. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> Giving those five yards right back as Antoine, who had the block punt. That led to the last score for the Panthers. Jumps too quickly. All sides. Defense, number three. Five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. All right, so we can try this fourth down one more time. And then look at the return, man. Now you see where the returner is. So he's standing on about the 16-yard line. So if he has to take any step backwards at all, fair catch or let it go. If you can catch something moving forward, then you can go for a return. Mullins watches this one sail out of bounds. And so now, 
the Panthers with 5.37 to go. Oh, They've oh, gained God, the no. momentum. They've sucked the life out of the stadium yes. as of now. And this could be huge for them going into the locker room. Still a lot of time left here in this first half. But this is what you want to see if you're a Panthers fan because we've talked so much about their offense, but their defense has been standing still. Hey, second quarter, I mean, a tale of two teams. They yeah. really stepped up to the challenge in the second quarter, giving their offense an opportunity to get on the field. Prairie View's playing their best football when the offense is on the field. And hats off to Jalen Morton. Shaky start to this game, but in the second quarter, he's been lights out. The handoff to Dewanye Tucker. Tucker only needs a little bit of space. He can make a lot of cuts and a pickup of just about eight on that first down carry. And you're starting to see the offensive line for Prairie View win those battles at the line of scrimmage and that forward push and lean that wasn't there earlier in the football game. Now they're starting to have their way a little bit with this off defensive line from all four. Quickly met. In the backfield is Michael Webb, back-to-back -back tackles for the Redshirt Junior. Brings up third down and three now for the Panthers. This is what it's all about, decision-making from your senior quarterback, Jalen Morton. Five for six on third downs are the Panthers. And throwing it right into the hands and in and out of the sure-handed receiver and Jordan Jones, the tight end, couldn't bring it in. Threw too hard. I mean, threw too hard. He was deciding if he was going to escape or leave and threw a hard ball. When he threw the fastball when he really needed the change up out there, just give him something easy to catch, and it was a little bit behind him. Comes up with an incompletion. So a three and out series <laughs> for Prairie View. High snap, hauled in. Caleb Darborn gets it away. First punt of the day for Prairie View AM, and we saw. A flag fall onto the field as Morrison was quickly wrapped up by Jeffrey Reckler. Flag on the far side of the field as this officiating crew has been wrecked on the tap. Very busy. <laughs> so this game hasn't been played neat. I'll say that. I'm not going to call it sloppy, but it hasn't been a neat game. Holding, receiving team, during the kick, number 22. The penalty would be a minute just from the end of the kick. First down. Jay, already we've seen 13 penalties between the Who's two teams. Who's counting? Yeah. Well, obviously you are. Yeah, well. <laughs> it was, again, just these two teams just swap. It was Alcorn State who got out to a quick start. In their first two drives, a couple of INTs for Morton. And then in the second quarter, it's been all Prairie View AM. And what I like to see right now with a game like this is clearly in the balance. Who's going to close out the first half on a high? I think whoever can seize control of the end of this half, last four minutes, will take that momentum with them into the locker room. The handoff to Duffy and Duffy is pushed out of bounds by Joshua Williams, the true freshman from New Orleans. I mean, and look at the defense from Prairie View. Mm -hmm. I was on them early in the game, but they have responded, and it looks like a completely different defense that we're seeing the Panthers put on the field. Now Panthers defender is down on the field. Can't quite see the jersey number just yet. But, again, coming in, yeah, giving up 34 points a game as far as even though we still have a lot of football left to play, the light bulb has turned on for Henry Miller's defensive unit. And they have made the adjustments necessary to work their way back into this ball game and take the lead. Right now, the 
would love to come up with another stop. You make another stop here on third down, you give the ball back, and you tell your offense it's your job to win the last four minutes that I talked about that would be crucial to take momentum into the locker room at halftime. Joshua Williams walking back to the sideline. And with the soft zone that Prairie View is playing, the receivers are there, but we've just seen Harper miss on his accuracy a little bit. He struggled with a couple throws, and that's what they challenged him to do, throw the ball down the field. Pressure in his face, gets the ball away. Tim McNair with the catch. It's good enough for a first down. Simple pattern, recognized man-to-man -man coverage, soft man-to-man -man coverage. And threw the curl route to McNair for the first down. 13 for the red shirt sophomore. As the Braves hurry to the line, they look to the sideline to get the call. Don't abandon the running game. Duffy flanking to the left. The handoff to the true freshman and nowhere to go and wrapped up very quickly by DePriest Taylor. And Taylor has been active from his middle linebacker position quite a bit. Getting to the ball carry and like I said, they're shedding blocks. Remember earlier they weren't shedding blocks? Watch him shed the block, go down the line of scrimmage and finish off the play. Jason Dumas also in on the stop. Harper just found a little soft spot in the coverage, and Pringle brings it in. Pringle's been the guy they've gone to to attack the inside seams of the defense from Prairie View and them. Good job holding on to the football. Moving quickly and quickly brought down was the ball carrier. There is Ronald Collins. Collins, the fifth-year senior out of Houston, Texas. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Braves trying to take the lead before going into the locker room. Throws it behind him and Trey Turner with not a lot of room and a flag is out. Well, there we normally see another holding call. Holding, offense, number 59. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, second down. So Fred McNair just wants to see his ball club finish out the quarter strong. It's second down, 20 yards to go. Thank you. You have to run the football here to make them use that timeout. If I'm Prairie View and them, and I can make a stop, I'm going to use a timeout. But if it's an incomplete pass, you're really doing Prairie View a favor. So, got to look at time management in this situation. Harper being chased and dangerous throw as Logan Jackson was covering McNair like all anything. the way. I, I just don't like it. Think about what happened. There was a minute and 40, 20, 25, 35 seconds, right? Incomplete pass, clock stops. So now, Prairie View's thinking, we're gonna get this football back. That's the last thing you want to have was an incomplete pass if you were all corn. That helps out Prairie View. If they can make a stop right now, they've got a timeout they can use, they can get the ball back with a minute, and in college football, a minute is an eternity to run no huddle offense. And now they hand it off, and Turner. Call timeout. Now, if you're Prairie View, you call timeout. Yep. See, they ran the ball one play too late. Mm -hmm. And now Prairie View still going to get the ball back with over a minute with the senior quarterback that's been running no huddle offense for a while. So now Eric Dooley's group make sure they try to save as much time as possible for their offense to try to drive down the field and tack on some more here. And, and 
be very interesting conversations at the half of both teams, right? <laughs> yeah. It, and it goes back to, you know, when we talked about closing out the half and taking that momentum. So if you're all corn, you had an opportunity to say, I'm going into the locker room. The worst case scenario, I'm going to be down by two points. Right? Prairie going to get this ball back. You're going to be fighting tooth and nail just to stay down by two points. It, it makes that difference. So now they didn't help out with their clock management. And you're putting more pressure on your defense going into the locker room. Just thought that could have been avoidable, and I think they should have just run the ball a little bit earlier in that series. And just a reminder to our viewers, Alcorn State led 17-0 after the first quarter. And then Prairie View A&M has made some big plays, including a blocked punt. They can't get to McCullough here. Inside the 20 and the return. And it didn't go the way they would have liked. Picked the pocket and just like that, the fumble recovery and the Charles Pringle, who's been everywhere, so active on offense. Those active hands coming up big on special teams. They needed it because <laughs> the, the crowd was out of it. Oh, now they're back. Well, that's what real fans do. Team does well, but. This is one here, one when he started retreating, should have just made the fair catch. Tries to do a little bit too much. Helmet on the football. Nice special teams play by the Braves. And a poor job by Tony Mullen. Not protecting the football. And I think they'll credit Michael Webb with that hat on the ball. Force the fumble. And the defender slow to get up for Prairie View AM and Desmond Obi, the defensive end. <laughs> Tell you, momentum is something. And how you go into that locker room goes a long way towards the second half. And to win, you gotta be good in offense, defense, and special teams. And that was a great job by the special teams unit from Alcorn State. And we've seen good play. In that phase of the game on both sides of the ball, now first and goal for Alcorn State. And Harper decides to keep it himself. One play. Five yards. Touchdown, Braves. Nice recognition, quick decision by Harper. Calls his own number. Nice ride, one cut, getting to the end zone. And the PAT is good, so the Braves regain the lead, but it's been an interesting first half seesawing back and forth good job there and you know something that's unique here i'm like okay why is this place so quiet when they score it's hbcu the band is getting ready on the field <laughs> so they don't have their instruments so they're in lined up formation so the crowd started doing the chant on their own without the band <laughs> so they're excited for the sounds of dynamite coming up at halftime well, i'll tell you this even though Alcorn State takes the lead, you still give Prairie View A&M 57 seconds, seconds to work with. And if you got Deronde Tucker in the back, you have to assume you're going to get the ball in pretty decent field position. So you think get the ball with a decent return and then go to work. Try and take the lead back. Hello, Juwan. Chris Steak. on the return. You saw it bounce, and he's tripped up near the 10-yard line. Strong play on special teams. Calvante Key was there. Yeah, mistake. Don't let that ball hit the ground. You want to get something moving forward. Now, with that being the case, bring, bring the offense out, take a knee. 
you, you want this return. Come up and catch it. Catch it on the run so you get momentum. You let it hit the ground and then try to get a return. You basically sealed your fate for the rest of this half. I'd be very shocked if they tried to go no huddle offense. And hand the ball off to Tucker and see if he can do something. And instead, they toss it over to Tony oh, Mullins. Oh, oh, oh. Was level. Whoa. Mullins meet Solomon, Solomon Muhammad. Muhammad. <laughs> oh, man. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Ouch. Mm. That's the. And Mullins has taken a lot of punishment today from a couple of Braves defenders. It's been the last couple 30 seconds for Mullins. He had the fumble, and then he just got clocked on television. And Solomon Muhammad showing you why he's the preseason SWAC defensive player of the year. <laughs> 14 seconds to go, and Alcorn State yeah, spins a timeout. Morning. Coming up at the half, HBCU news and notes, highlights and stats and our Gimme Five segment features the greatest players in all Corn State history. You will not want to miss it. This is Jay's Gimme Five, as he likes to say. Sorry, Coach Fred McNair, you're not going to make the list. Just telling you that he, he's one of the greats. A lot of people don't realize that Fred McNair was the original Air McNair. Steve was Air Two McNair. But you know the list must be good when you got a guy like Fred McNair not making the list. Had a long career in the CFL, a, an amazing passer. Now with 16 seconds to go before the close of the half. Got to think the Panthers was trying to run out this clock. Although Alcorn State does have one more timeout remaining. Are they looking for, that was the big hit play, wasn't it? Yeah. So I wonder if they're trying to look for target. But I just thought it was a football play. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they just said we're gonna you know play it out and Solomon Muhammad who is the preseason SWAC defensive player of the year coming up with a big hit by Tony Mullins and Morton deciding to run the football slides underneath before another Braves player in Jawan Taylor comes flying in he whistles blown 10 seconds to go and final timeout from Alcorn State I mean, I think Alcorn was going to try and get the ball back, maybe get a decent return, attempt a last-second field goal to end the half. But that was a pretty good job by Morton. Almost picking up the first down. So now, see if Alcorn special teams can make another play. I mean, there's no circumstance at all which you go for this if you're a Prairie View a &M. Well, I'll tell you the way that the Braves have scored today. They've scored more points off of turnovers, 17 to be exact. So we'll see if they can cause a little havoc. But if you're Prairie View A&M, you got to feel good going into the locker room if you can have the score hold as is because you received the ball to start the second half. Yeah, I mean, game is definitely in the balance of the second half, but I just think that took a lot out of Prairie View. They, they, were, they took momentum back in this game and then the fumble on the punt return which brought Alcorn back life. He's not going for it. <laughs> he was there to do a fake. There's no way you go for it. But then he decide, okay, I will go for it in the half. <laughs> they were they were not intending on going for that. Right. But then they were like, you're really not going to defend us at all? So <laughs> good job by Morton. Call the quarterback sneak. Bad the stats, pick up a first down, and... We'll go into the locker room with Alcorn State up 24-19, but a valiant effort by the visitors on the road who surged in the second quarter to make this thing pretty interesting. Good ball game, folks, as Alcorn State ever so tough when they're leading at the half, 14-0.
since 2017. So much more to come here from the reservation. Highlights and stats, give me five and more coming up at the half. Back at the half, a good ball game here between Alcorn State and Prairie View AM as conference play is underway. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you. The sounds of dynamite ready to take the field in just a moment for Alcorn State. Well, we take a look around. News and notes in the league, and look, first take, making a big statement in their HBC week, uh, continuing to make a commitment to historically black colleges and universities, third year of doing so, of taking the show on the road, Stephen A. Smith, repping from Delaware State. Yeah, that was good. You know, I think it's something everybody knows, or they should know, Stephen A. Smith went to an HBCU at Winston-Salem State, so it was HBCU college fair they had there. He added a little flair to it. He brought up his band from Winston-Salem State, so you had <laughs> Delaware State's band there, as well as the, the band from Winston-Salem State University that plays for the Rams all year. Well, you take a look at some of the coaching changes. Yes, we've seen a couple of second-year coaches. We're seeing one here today in Eric Dooley. But when you think about the MEAC who welcomed in three new head coaches, uh, Tyrone Wheatley at Morgan State, along with Ron Prince at Howard, as well as Trey Oliver at North Carolina Central. Your thoughts on the changes? It's going to be interesting. Uh, I think the one, the most high-profile job was probably the job at North Carolina Central because they had some success. So I think that we're going to see how it plays out. It hasn't been good so far. Chauncey Caldwell, the quarterback for North Carolina Central, for the past two years, transferred after the first game. So those things are in limbo. And Howard hadn't gotten going yet under Ron Prince but they were fortunate to get their first victory today over Delaware State, so maybe that'll turn around. And finally, surprise teams through week three of the football season. Alabama State and Alabama A&M. I can't figure out Alabama A&M. Are they the team that went and beat North Alabama, the team they haven't beaten in 31 years? Or are they the team that got 52 points put on them in a loss to Arkansas Pine Bluff? Alabama State, I think you're going to hear from them. They've been competitive versus University of uh, Alabama Birmingham, UAB, which is playing up, and then they took care of business versus Tuskegee. Is this finally the year that Alabama State can try to challenge Alcorn and make it to the SWAT championship game? Well, remember, they had that five overtime win against the Braves a season ago. We'll have more from Lorman, Mississippi. Gimme five is on the other side. The sounds of Dynamite paying tribute to the late great Steve McNair as they spell out air on the field. One of the greatest college football players at quarterback that you and I have seen, Jay, as we say hello and welcome again. It's give me five time. You got to give the people what, what they, they want. want. So let's give them five. And how about this? We're here at Alcorn State University. So we got to pay homage to all these legends there. Although I had my battles with Alcorn, went 2-0 and against Alcorn, for the record, never lost to him. But let's talk about the five best players in the history of Alcorn State football, right? I'm going with number five, Jack Spinks. Not only played here, but was a coach here. When the stadium's named after you here, you have to be an impact player. So Jack Spinks would be number five. Number four, Jimmy Giles. Now, I used to love Jimmy Giles because he was Doug Williams' main target when he played at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Jimmy Giles got it done. I think he should be an NFL Hall of Famer, but he's a legend down here. Moving on to number three, who is that guy? That's Donald Driver. What I like about him, lettered in track and football here before he went on to have a legendary career with the Green Bay Packers. We know how good he was winning the Super Bowl as well. Number two, a lot of times can be number one, but I'm going with Medgar Evers. And you can take this one for on and off the field. Civil rights pioneer, but a lot of people don't know he played football here at Alcorn State University. Quite an impressive list thus far, Jay. So my question is then who would fall into number one? Because 
that ain't bad right now. That's a great list there, but <laughs> I think you know, I know, everybody knows. When you talk about Alcorn State football, there's only one. That's number nine. Steve Air McNair, he's making the argument to be considered the greatest college quarterback in the history of college football. That's how impactful he was. Was a Heisman Trophy finalist when he was playing at what was in one double-A football. Steve Air McNair with a special talent. Imagine how good he'd be in today's NFL, but we battled so much for Steve Air McNair. I can't think of all for without mentioning you, buddy. You deserve it. Rest in heaven up there, but your impact on the game of college football is still felt down here. All right, so who was close to making the list but finds themselves on the bubble? Well, you got several people you can put there, but I'm going with John Theory. Right? And I, I like Marcus and those guys too, but uh, Leslie Frazier as well. But John Theory uh, passed away as well, but he left here as a teammate, Steve McNair. First round draft pick for the Chicago Bears in 1994. So John Theory, I'll put you there. That's our gimme five. All right, I like that. Give me five. If you have something to say about it, of course, you can always tweet Jay as what he has to say. But another note I want to mention on, you know, Steve McNair. He was honored this past weekend. His jersey was retired. The Tennessee Titans did a terrific job in honoring him. Fred McNair said it was a joyous moment for the family, and they will retire his jersey here October 26th against Southern. The Braves leading at the half. Come back for more. Rookie. It was an entertaining first half between SWAC opponents, Prairie View A&M and Alcorn State. Just before we get set to start the third quarter, let's go back and look at how we got here, Jay. And that first quarter, it all belonged to Alcorn State. Prairie View was late to arrive here in Lorman, Mississippi. Jalen Morton didn't get off to a good start. Two interceptions on the first two drives of the game. But after that, Second quarter, different ball game. Jalen Moore showed what he can do with the football in his hands, and I thought this was crucial. Second and 35, he goes over the top of the defense and finds a receiver open for a touchdown. They had nearly 490 yards combined between the two teams, and when you shake down the quarterbacks, of course, Felix Harper getting the start over the injured Noah Johnson against Jalen Morton. And it's Morton, even though those two INTs, a couple of passing touchdowns and more than 200 yards. And you kind of get the feeling who's more valuable to their team. When, when they struggled, when he threw the two interceptions, you thought they were going to get blown out. When he got hot, he got hot, put his team right back in the ball game. And Felix Harper started out well, but I thought he struggled towards the end of the first half. We got to see what type of adjustments he can make to get him going again. All right, we'll be back with second half action in this SWAC opener from the reservation. We'll see you real soon. Rookie. ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. Good ball game going as the second half is just about set and underway from the reservation. Felix Harper and the Alcorn State Braves with the lead over Prairie View A&M. The Panthers who went surging in that second half. Jay, as you mentioned, looked really sharp. Both teams doing a good job through the air and pretty even on the ground. The offense for Prairie View is good as advertised. The defense stepped up in the second quarter. Can that defense hold on in the second half to continue to give their team an opportunity to stay in this football game? But I don't want to not give credit to Alcorn. They're playing a very talented Prairie View A&M team with the backup quarterback. They don't have their starting quarterback, the offensive player of the year preseason in Noah Johnson. And they still managed to find a way to compete and went to the locker room with the lead. Well, you think about the fact that the Panthers gave up the ball three times in that first half and only trail by five. Good look there at Noah Johnson, who was knocked out of last game. And so he was, he's a day-to-day -day decision right now. And Felix Harper stepping in. Meanwhile, for the Panthers, 
They're set to receive and get the ball first here in this third quarter. Dewanye Tucker is back and signals for the fair catch kind of early in that kick, Jay. So a long way to go for the Panthers in their opening drive of the second half. It'll be interesting to see what the mindset is. I thought when they decided to just open up the offense and throw, there were some passing lanes there. But I still think Tawanya Tucker was waiting to do something explosive and have an impact in this football game. Jalen Morton did a good job spreading the ball around to several different receivers. As Morton trying to give a little shake and bake and he picks up a few Solomon Muhammad along with Chris Monroe in on the stop. A couple of guys that we featured early on. These guys that make it go when they're fresh and not tired, they're difference makers in the middle for all Corn State defensively. Chris Monroe one of those quiet guys up front, but he makes a lot of noise with his play as Tucker continues to get knocked around. One of the things that Kirby likes to do more than anybody else is run this little triple option. And we talked about earlier how Morgan, more athletic than people give him credit for being 6'4", 230 pounds, he can become shifty and elusive runner. He can bring you that dual threat option as Prairie View now third and two. They're five for eight on third downs and some hard running up ahead from Caleb Broach. Solomon Muhammad once more there to wrap him up. And that's what you like about Solomon Muhammad. Although they picked up the first down, Muhammad, that prototypical inside linebacker, 6'1", 6'2", 240 pounds. But what you look for there, when he touches you, is to play over. That's how you know you got a good linebacker. When I get there, I'm bringing some luggage with me. Plays over, and he does a good job for that for this brave defense. He had a breakout. Sophomore season continues to get stronger and stronger as the pass is complete to Chris Johnson on first down. Dalen Burks was right there to greet him. This is the type of drive that you need to have if you're crazy. They don't like this, you know, running the ball, throwing short. They like big plays, but I think this is what they're going to have to make the adjustment and have the patience to drive the ball down the field. And Tucker is so slippery. He was just tripped up across midfield, and Tucker just weaved his way up the middle. Yeah, he's good. I mean, it's not a surprise. At one point in the season last year, he was leading the nation in yards per carry. And he was averaging over six and a half yards per carry around the midway point in the season. Give him a little bit of daylight, and he can hurt you. They hand it off once more to Tucker, makes a couple of defenders miss, and Tucker still on the feet, loses the football, and Colby Lewis was right there to recover it. His left guard says, I got your back, man. I got your back. <laughs> but like I said about when you see Tucker, I mean, this is every time he carries the football, you just think something special can happen. And towards the end, helmet came off and hit the ball, all on the ground, and fortunate that Colby Lewis was there. Caleb Broach gives Tucker a spell in the backfield, first and 10. And Morton with plenty of time Look, surveying the field and throws it right into the hand of Quinterio Cole, his second interception of the game. Well, just like that, the momentum shifts right back over to the Braves after a good solid drive being put together to open the half for the Panthers. That's what we talk about, the patience. It wasn't there, just throw the ball away, but this is not a patient offense. They rely on the big play. We give them credit for being patient on that drive, and then right here just decides to force a throw. Nobody around, poor decision by Jalen Morton, and it cost his team an opportunity to get in the red zone. I mean, just, just throw the ball away. Okay, they got you. They had a better defense call than the play selection you had. Throw the ball away, live to fight another day. But Can't four turnovers. Yeah, four turnovers now for the Panthers. Fumble. And the ball comes out. And just like that, Prairie View A&M gets the ball back. Darius Hawkins in on the recovery. This game's getting wacky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, swacky. Swacky. Ah. 
But it's going to happen. You got rivalry games, conference games, hard hits taking place on the field, and just a great job of getting to the ball. Is that Obi? Desmond Obi, number 58, the DN, collapses the pocket, breaks up the rhythm, and good play by the Prairie View defense. Well, now, second breath and chance for the Panthers. Dewanye Tucker, you see the speed bouncing out to the outside. And you hold your breath when he has the ball in his hands. Get, get your popcorn ready every time he's got it, because something's going to happen special. It's going to make you toss a couple up in the air. Picked up a dozen on that carry. They like to say that he's the general in the backfield. They call him the quarterback back there because hey, hey, he's the only, <laughs> only, one? Okay. only one quarterback. Only one Don't be too sensitive, Jay, about that one, all right? In That's and a out of That's the hands. A... Ooh. Tony Mullins. Ooh. It was close. I'd like to see that replay. That's that little triple option they like to do. With, and that's what you mean. Every now and then you do a little bit too much, Jalen. You don't need to do that. You got the ball in the red zone. This ball here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is ever a sideways pass? That was sideways. Now, did it go <laughs> forward enough? Guess so, but like I said, not protecting ball security. Unnecessary risk. Tough snap to handle, and Morton just has to eat that one. Several purple jer jerseys met him right there. Jaron Jackson was a part of the group. And this is a case where you want to go to Tristan Wallace, number 11, but they've been double teaming Tristan Wallace. He hasn't had single coverage all night. They always have a safety over him high, a cornerback underneath. So now I like what they're doing. They're changing the formation, go with a bunt formation, and putting Tristan Wallace in the front of the formation. Number 11 at the top of your screen. Instead, they decide to check down Jordan Jones with the spin move. The tight end oh. finds his way! Oh, the former running back in high school, grambling transfer, made up for that drop ball he had earlier. Showing that the big fella still has running back moves. This is like a swing pass out of the backfield. Nice shake for the big fella. <laughs> Poor tackling, he gets in. Well, he is taking a page out of the book, maybe, of Dewanye Tucker with those dancing feet, spin move, and finds his way into the end zone. 13 yards, and they're going for two here. With the Panthers. Got to see the play whistle dead. It's the offense. By your penalty, replay. I mean, After the penalty, yeah. You can't do that. You've got a card that tells you when you're going for two or not. So you can't get caught up in the emotion and say, okay, I'm going to delay or whatever. Now you cost your team five more yards. Chances go down a lot that you won't pick up this two point conversion. Morton has plenty of space. He's a big guy. Does he get in? Yes. Be quiet, Jay Walker. We're, <laughs> we're going to get it. They convert for two points and now take a lead of three. Boy, that was a lot going on there. First, the fumble. Then, the scoring drive. Jordan Jones says, show me what you got. I got a little deuce in me. Rookie. Took four plays in a minute and 24 seconds for Prairie View A&M to grab the lead back. They were able to get into the end zone after recovering a fumble from Alcorn State. And now they find themselves with a little momentum. Javen Morrison and Morrison on the return for the Braves. 
And he's brought down just across the 20 yard line. Well, Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that honors great teachers across the country. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. When you go back to your college days, Jay, is there a professor that stands out for you that really helped to make a difference for you? Uh, Professor-wise, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Dr. Wright, political science professor there at Howard University. Didn't care if I played football at all. <laughs> so I, I respect that. Lessons I learned from him in political science helped me with life lessons. How about you down there on, uh, on the set? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kenneth Jones was our professor at the School of Journalism knew, and Graphic knew Communication. No, he's going to J School. Going to J school. school. <laughs> Shout out, family, J School. Uh, but it, he was just terrific because he always pushed me and challenged me, and I felt like he gave me all the tools uh, that I needed uh, for a newsroom situation. That's where I started out in local news. How about... It's a Prairie View A&M defense. Cause I got to give him a shout out because I was so hard on them in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. But since then, they have, they're taking it to Alcorn. And look, Story Jackson is back at linebacker for the Panthers. Remember, we saw him go down in the first quarter. That's a big addition for the Panthers to see him return to the field. And they like his length. 6'3", 225 pounds. Plays that linebacker position, weak side. Got some cover skills and one of the seven transfers on this roster, junior college transfer, who they expect big things from this season. Third and six, and just batting the ball away and getting there. Good defense from oh, Jalen Harris. And Harris, who transferred from UTEP. <laughs> so they transfer all over the roster, but you see that? They're making them throw the ball downfield, mm -hmm. and in that case there, Harper, Chose to throw the wide side curl route, giving the defensive back Harris an opportunity and time to break on the ball, get the pass break up. So a quick three and out for the Braves. McCullough gets it away. Fair catch signal, Tony Mullins collects it, and just across the 40-yard line, that's where the Panthers' offense will start when we come back. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Jalen Morton on the first down carry as Prairie View A&M with a three-point lead. And you look back to, you flash back to 2018, and it was a great season for the Braves. But Prairie View A&M is feeling like they're in position to maybe take that top spot in the SWAC. Well, the SWAC West for years had always been the more competitive portion of it, and that was nothing Prairie View can control. That's where Grambling and Southern hang out. But Prairie View knocked off Grambling last year, couldn't knock off Southern. Can they do it? And this would be a huge step in the right direction if they can beat Alcorn. Dewanye Tucker, patient running. Ooh. You see him. Ooh. Oh, man, look at Dewanye Tucker continue to go. Uh, edge of your seat yeah. runner. Yeah. Certain guys that just have that special knack to make it happen. Look at, watch the explosion. Got small, one cut, and the, the run's not over. Keep his balance. Keep going. Pick up some extra yardage. Dewande Tucker proven to America why he's so special. I'll tell you, last year we saw him in the first game of the season. He had a jaw-dropping performance. We were like, okay, wait a minute. Who is, who is this? <laughs> Dewande Tucker. And you know what I like about him? And the coaches say of him, he's just as determined to get his 
education and that degree as he is on the football field. And you see that continuing to move the ch move forward as Jalen Morton. Yeah. Watch him block for his quarterback. Yeah. Did you see him act as a lead blocker going against Solomon Muhammad? I mean, you're going to see Tucker right here. Watch him meet him in the hole. He's not running from contact. Look, get around that edge. Uh, get up in the shoulder. That's what you want. <laughs> and Tucker on oh, the man. carry. Oh, oh man. He just continues to bounce around. Oh, Anybody oh, watching, Dewanye Tucker. <laughs> is a star in the making. Yeah, keep him in there. Why are you taking him out? You know, you start saying, I'm feeling it, coach. If I don't tap out, continue to feed me the rock. I'm just a little mad because I was having fun watching him. <laughs> <laughs> and then they put him on the sideline. But Nearing the century mark already with 92 yards. Dewanye Tucker keeping this offense going. Gotta see that. And Morton with nowhere to go, and guess who? Number 49 in purple, Solomon Muhammad. An HBCU All American. The slack leads to a loss of five. Yeah, easy recognition. They were bringing the blitz from the outside linebacker position as well as a cornerback blitz, trying to keep everything in front. And I just don't think that Jalen Morton recognized this defensive scheme and held on to a football he should have given to the running back. Here's Morton with time. Man, wide open. Jordan Jones, second score. Holla at your boy. Tell you, I'll start calling Jalen Morton like sweet and sour. <laughs> he'll do something really bad, then he'll do something really good. And that was a nicely thrown ball, but a nice shake route down the seam from Jordan Jones. Uh, from his tight end position, gives you a little wiggle at the top of the route. Look at all that separation. Thrown right on the M O N E Y touchdown, Airview A and M. Prairie View A and M has continued to keep their foot on the gas. The visiting Panthers creating more separation. You couldn't ask for more wide open than that. Morton delivered. And then get across to the middle of the field. That was executed to perfection. Clean release up the field. Give me the stick. Then come across. That creates separation. Nice throw, nice catch, but more importantly, nice route. Felix Harper working back with his offense, finding his favorite target, LaCharles Pringle, and Pringle across the 50-yard line. And Pringle has been so sure-handed today, brought down by Tariq Momore, pickup of 26. And Pringle's done his damage in the middle of the field. He's their guy they use to attack the zone, increases, not afraid to mix it up. I'll say this, Jay. Alcorn State has been able to run the ball well at times, and we've seen a lot of Deco Duffy, but Deshaun Waller, we haven't seen as much of him as we suspected. I don't know if uh, he's feeling okay right now, but certainly Nico Duffy has kind of been the workhorse and the main go-to bat for the Braves. And they flank it out to Duffy. That's that's defense. See, that's why I say that's the adjustment they haven't made. Three jerseys around him. You can't ask a running back to make three guys coming downhill and have a good play. They're doing a good job when they stretch the ball downfield. The curl flat is there. It's a very vanilla coverage, but I just don't think that Alcorn came prepared to throw the ball downfield with their quarterback. They just thought we're going to throw everything sideline to sideline, but, but Prairie View A&M has made that adjustment time and time again. Man wide open is Akeem McNair. McNair, that name called once more this time. It's Fred McNair's son. He's a true freshman out of Collins, Mississippi. And they say, you know, he's the kind of guy that just gives you a different look on the outside. Most coaches' sons kind of have that. You know, they, they know the game inside and out. 
I told you it wouldn't be an all State football team without a McNair on the roster, and he's one of two. Again, quickly out to McNair. And it looks like they'll continue to stay content, really, you know, just with the quick wide receiver screens or the, or the quick flat passes. I mean, and that last one wasn't there, but that was a great individual effort by McNair to pick up some positive yardage on first down. It's a good look right there, Fred. You're not going to coach your son. Stepping right in front of the play and almost picked off as Jalen Harris anticipated that pass, but just couldn't come down with it. I mean, jumping the route, they're sitting. So right now, Elliot Ratton, the offensive coordinator for Alcorn, you have to make the adjustment. That was every indication there that I kind of know what I'm talking about. They are sitting on the short stuff and coming up attacking. When they get that type of jump on the ball, then you've got to make an adjustment, go with a double move, or at least stretch the field vertically. And Waller out of pads and not a good sign for the Braves as their star running back is done for the evening. Pringle continuing to gain yards. He was knocked out by Darius Campbell, but you go back to Waller, he's not there. They continue to move on, not miss a beat, but moving forward, how does that impact them? What a difference this could be. You're talking about Noah Johnson out and Waller out. Two all-conference performers that play at a very high level. Penalty marker on the play as Harper targeted Tim McNair. And you saw the play selection and they went with the double move to get Perry and them on its heels. So even if it's an incomplete pass, I don't mind the call because you're setting it up. So they realize you will go downfield, set them up with a double move if you can. The leading substitution against the defense. That penalty will be declined. Pass interference. Defense, number 13, spot foul. Automatic first down. I think he may have meant to say number 31, <laughs> Logan Jackson. So now you need to firm up. The key thing for Prairie View, Alcorn's put together a decent drive. Keep them out of the end zone. Make them settle for a field goal attempt. Nico Duffy, Duffy with room, stretches out, loses the ball, but crosses the plane and touchdown. Duffy with a seven yard score. Good thing, I was curious to whether or not this ball was coming out as he was going into the end zone. Started moving a little bit. Good thing he was smart enough to recover his own. Even close, but doesn't matter. Good job by the young freshman for the score. Well, Corn State put together a good drive to answer that of Prairie View A&M. Come back with us. www.redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. calling for the fair catch and you you think about just all the devastation that's happened uh, just not only in the Bahamas but you look to the Houston area even they have been inundated with rain more than 40 inches major flooding in fact that even affected the drive over for Prairie View A&M in Texas is about six hours from Lorman Mississippi and it was tough to get out and when we talked with coach Dooley he said we had to make a stop in Baton Rouge uh, and then come over Friday morning and they got in about 3 a.m. So our thoughts and prayers are with everyone in the Houston area who may be affected by the flooding. 
really starting to realize in this game, I need to get some more Tucker. <laughs> get a ball to Delanye Tucker. First down, I love it. He's going to pick up positive yardage, even if the defense is expecting the play. And still got that feeling that he's going to do something special. He's had a great night so far, some highlight runs. But you just have a feeling the best is yet to come. Morton decides to keep it himself. Morton gets positive yardage out of that one. And, and that's a situation there where give the ball to Tucker. Sometimes Morton tries to do a little bit too much. And we've seen it tonight with the interceptions that he's thrown. Or, But he does have the athleticism to get himself out of a jam. And we saw that good mobility by the senior. Now third and one for the Panthers, the 33-yard line. And the handoff to Caleb Broach, and Broach <laughs> found a hole up the middle, and then boom, the, the collision with Jawan Taylor <laughs> shortly thereafter. Oh, that was a hit, and that's why I tell everybody, football could be a hard-hitting game, violent game, little boring two- or three-yard run, but look at this, bam! Sent him backwards and sideways. Broach held on to the football, picked up the first down. There's been a lot of hard hitting in this game. It's been good, but that's what you, you expect in a conference game and some movement up front for the Panthers. I think that's why the game is close and interesting because. Offense, number 75, five yard penalty, free play, the down. Because we know that Alcorn's physical. I think the question mark was, would Prairie View be able to match the physical style of play that Alcorn does? And hats off to the Panthers. The boys from Texas came in here. They knew they were getting into a fight, and they've been fighting Alcorn tooth and nail. And that's why this game's been so physical, hard hits and everything. Everything you like in a classic football game. Double pass. Double pass here. And Tristan Wallace, who was a dual threat quarterback at Oregon, and oh, just missed there as Chris almost came up with it. Ball bounced around and in on the coverage is Key and Taylor for the Braves. They're just, they're just greedy. Prairie View, they go for it all, big plays. I mean, Wallace had a guy wide open, 15 yards in front of him. Right? I, I want you to take a look right here in the soft spot. He's open. Give it to me. Give it to me. He's like, you're not giving me the ball. Instead, he throws in the double coverage, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the way they do it. In practice, I'm sure he's not taking that check down. So <laughs> they go for it all. Morton able to release it. And Travis O'Connor is taken down by Solomon Muhammad. And now it's third down. You get the feeling now, the pressure's on Prairie View. Convert this third down, or else that all corn team got a little momentum going. If they can get a stop, the offense scored for them. And I think an incomplete pass is not the worst thing in the world if you're Jalen Moore. You can't afford another interception or a turnover. Three picks on the night and finds DeWanye Tucker, has him out in plenty of space. And you know, if you could just get him the ball, let him do the rest. <laughs> I mean, that would have been a first down easily if Morton were able to make a more accurate throw. That was the right place to go with the football. They brought the blitz from that side, but they left Tucker unaccounted for in the flat. He's going to wish he had that throw back. The return and on the move is LaCharles Pringle. And Pringle with a solid return after the 22 yard punt by Caleb Darborn. Excuse me, 51 yard punt. And the player is down. That appears to be Collins. You said it earlier, Tiff. I mean, just not too long ago. This has been a very physical game, a lot of hard hits. Ronald Collins, the injured player down, fifth year senior out of Houston, Texas. 
Had a solid start to the season thus far for the Panthers. And he's really stepped up. He plays defensive line for Prairie View. And I think when he stepped up his game, started getting physical, started fighting with Alcorn, they were able to kind of neutralize the advantage Alcorn had early on on the line of scrimmage. And they appear to be working on that lower left leg just around the ankle area. As he's helped up. Ginger to walk to the sideline as he's being assisted by his teammates, not wanting to put too much pressure. That, 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 could, keep be an eye on that, one. that yeah. could be a big loss if he's not able to return, but hopefully he's able to get back in this football game, help his team out. They do need his presence in that interior defensive line position. Look there at Eric Dooley, a correction from earlier mentioned uh, that he is actually a Grambling State graduate, played under the, under, uh, the great Eddie Robinson. And so Harper trying to go down the sideline, and he finds his man, Chris Blair, and Blair is able to haul it in. Big time throw. And look at the location of this throw, outside pocket, Left side, shoulder, throw, a big time throw. And that's a throw that they've been challenging him to do. And he came through in a big way. Harper dancing around, got to hold on to that football. And just near the 25 yard line, stopped by Treshard Smith. Something we haven't seen Prairie View do much of since the first quarter is that blitz to the blind side of. Harper, the left-handed thrower, so that right side blitz wouldn't be surprised if they decide to dial it up sometime soon. The handoff here to Nico Duffy, and Duffy drags a couple of defenders with him. Smith once more in on the stop. A pickup of seven is good enough to move the chains. I really like this freshman. Good hard run in there. The initial contact, he was probably three or four yards short of the first down. Had the momentum and the strength to pull through and pick up a first down. And that was the last play of the third quarter as Prairie View A&M trying to slow down Alcorn State. The Braves inside the red zone. More to come. Final quarter when you come back. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's and in part by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. We stand on the shoulders of so many great people, a statue of Medgar Wiley Evers who attended Alcorn State University, went on to be a great civil rights activist helping to end segregation and really worked hard for the voting rights of others and his Alma mater. This is why you need to win. That was great. The whole description. He left out something. He played he football played, here at all. He you know what? The, 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 the action resumed. Such a scholar. So quick. <laughs> 11 yards on the pickup. First and goal. And coming through is Nico Duffy. And Duffy, the true freshman who has had a great start to the season with the six yard scamper. And the Braves are feeling it here. This tells you how good this team is. Backup quarterback, backup running back, no excuses. Alcorn takes the lead behind the hard running of its freshman running back, Nico Duffy from Tampa, Florida, Jefferson High. And the PAT is good. So Nico Duffy has been active all game long. 14 rushes and two touchdowns. And that one was important to start things off for all Corn State here in the fourth quarter. I mean, this game has been back and forth in the balance all over. That band gets it going. 
Remember how quiet this stadium was yeah. probably an hour ago? Wow, look at that. The scoreboard has gone out. It's just that electric in the stadium tonight. <laughs> Uh-oh. Or, or perhaps are they absorbing all of that power <laughs> out onto the field? We've got a wonderful ball game. And Jay, look, we wondered if this would be a shootout and who would win in this shootout. And right now, it happens to favor the Braves. Yeah, and I thought shootout very favored Prairie View A&M and still plenty of points that are going to be scored in this game. But the fact that Alcorn found a way to match the offensive prowess of Prairie View in this football game, despite not having their star running back, their star quarterback, shows you the heart of this great football team. And over the head of Dewanye Tucker, we'll see what the Braves' defense can do as their offense has scored 14 straight points to regain the lead. And I'm glad that the scoreboard's working again because <laughs> when HBCU scoreboards go out, that's when the hustle's on. See, I'm still spooked from when I played Florida A&M, right? And the moment we got momentum and scored, made it a close game, scoreboard went out. They started keeping the time on the field. Quickest game in the history of college football. <laughs> <laughs> and them fam, you folks know what I'm talking about. They will rob you with that clock down there. What are you there. trying to say? <laughs> no, no home cooking going on. What are you talking about, man? What they would call that is talking out the side of your neck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I call it cheating down there in Tallahassee. <laughs> Tough place to win. Got a good one going on between the Rattlers and the Jaguars of Southern University. First down carry by DeWanye Tucker. Pick up a four. He's giving him. That means feed me. He yeah. wants the rock. So as good as he is. I'm going to get him the rock. Mm -hmm. I want them to go back to that swing pass out of the backfield where Morton missed on it. I think they should give that another shot. Tucker with patience, and Tucker once mm. more. I mean, he's just so <laughs> tough to bring down. He just slides left, right, spin. You, you know, he's got it all. He's, he's got it all, and I keep saying it. Reminds me a lot of Tariq Cohen, mm -hmm. and they question whether or not Tariq Cohen could do those things in the NFL. Well, ask the Chicago Bears where the steal they got. And I believe in watching Tucker, a lot of similar things like Tariq Cohen. Morton fires. And right there to receive it is Tristan Wallace. And Wallace, who you mentioned, Jay, who's been you know, pretty bottled up today. A lot of double coverage on him. But they want to see Wallace figure out ways to get open despite the double coverage. And anytime he gets one-on-one, -on -one, he's a matchup problem. So he's getting one-on-one -on -one right now. They're going to continue to feed him. And, and Wallace breaks the arm tackle. And continuing to run, Torrance Wilson knocked him out of bounds. So you, you get that one-on-one -on -one coverage in, you know he's going to force it to change. And then that's when Devonye Tucker can hurt you. So just a quick little hitch route. Shows you the athleticism, makes the catch, doesn't put the knee down, runs through the tackle with that nice frame, 6'3", 225 pounds. And now Tucker. Tucker, it's Tucker time, ladies and gentlemen. Boom! <laughs> Torrance Wilson said hello. Um, stay right here. Don't go anywhere. Oh. And that's what you're supposed to do. When you get your hands on a little guy, you got to make it a hard tackle. <laughs> so he got his hands on him, made it a hard tackle. Morton and the Panthers offense continuing to move and that one out of the reach. And now a penalty flag coming in at the end of the play as Chris was the intended target. Quinterio Cole, who's on the coverage. He, remember, he's had a couple of INTs today. So late had to be a personal foul. He jumped into the man. Talk to me, homie. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness against the defense on the half the distance to the goal, first down. And those are penalties you can ill afford in a game like this. Yeah, I mean, it's a throwaway play. He comes over and hits him about four or five yards away. And I think defenseless player hit him in the back. Did he need to? I think everybody knew the ball was going away. Not as vicious a hit as I first thought it was, but 
nonetheless, they're telling you, in college football, it's all about safety. And you can't hit defenseless players anymore. The handoff to Tucker. DeWanye Tucker continuing to stay on his feet and the score! Second touchdown of the game for DeWanye Tucker. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that young man? And I think this is one of the ones where if you're an all-course state fan, you want to get the victory, but enjoy what you're watching. You're watching a special talent in DeWanye Tucker just run circles around your defense. Took a hard hit on the previous carry, but this one doesn't get phased. Gets into the end zone. This kid is good. Duane Tucker, 19 carries, 127 yards, and two scores. He can do it all. It's been the Duane Tucker highlight reel. And great runners, they know where the end zone is. They know how to finish the run. Prairie View up by three. Maybe back ribs with steakhouse mac and cheese. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse, you can't fake steak. Let's take a look at tonight's Bring in the Flavor presented by McDonald's. I'll tell you, they have been bringing it on the field tonight. What you want to see, a heavyweight bout between two SWAC opponents. Look out. And tough to field that one. And Nico Duffy is so lucky to have come up with that one. We're Prairie View A&M has been riding number one and number 12, Jalen Morton. 284 passing yards tonight, four touchdowns, even though the three blemish is there, but DeWanye Tucker has been magical. The star power, that was what we talked about. They've got star power. They've got three guys that are some of the best in this level of college football, and we're yet to hear from Tristan Wallace, but we start to see signs of that because it was when Wallace got involved in the passing game that opened up the running lanes for Dewanye Tucker. And right now, I think Alcorn is bewildered in terms of how to stop this Prairie View A&M offense. Twelve-minute mark in this fourth quarter, high-scoring affair. And bringing the pressure, coming right up the middle, seemingly untouched, was... <laughs> Jason Dumas, but still, somehow, wow. some way, Harper was able to get the ball out. They're saying mm -hmm. it's an incompletion, but Jason Dumas <laughs> just came there with reckless abandon. He timed the snap, and what a job of getting this ball out. I thought he was down. I'm sure they got to take a look at this. And he's in the grass and gets that. He's a lefty. Good. Nope. Not down. <laughs> Not down. If he's a right-handed quarterback, that would have been the sack. But and normally you'd say he was just getting rid of the ball, mm -hmm. but, but he completed the pass. <laughs> so that is, a, that is a great play. Good job of escaping by Felix Harper. Dumas may be cramping up a little bit. And so I think you he saw got that, his feelings hurt. He that, got to the quarterback, did all that work, and didn't get the credit for the sack. When third down in pass situation, whenever all corners gone to a trips formation, it's given Prairie View trouble. Their zone alignment's not there to communication. I wouldn't come out in this two by two formation. I'd motion the guy, get trips. Harper going for Blair, and Blair just overthrows his target, oh. and they throw a late flag. That's Darius Hawkins was on the coverage. That's That's got to be an uncatchable ball. Now, if you want to call holding, okay. But was it pass interference? I, I, I just didn't see that. 
Uh, if this is pass interference, that is a bailout call. Pass interference. Defense, number 32, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Show me something. The defensive back's not really arguing his case too much. I mean, look how far that ball is thrown. He's just riding them. Yeah. <laughs> You're allowed to ride them. About four or five uh, yards over his head. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough, tough call there. The now, <laughs> now, if this was NFL, this would be challenging that, <laughs> challenging the, the pass interference call. Prairie View takes a timeout, but right now, they have the defending SWAC champions on the ropes at home here in Lorman, Mississippi, and the Braves trying to start off conference play with a W. And let's not forget this. The SWAC championship game will be played at whoever has the best record in conference play. So every game counts. You know, you don't want to settle for winning the western part of the division or the eastern part. You want to have the best record overall so you can host the SWAC championship. And I believe this game may have something to say about where that game could be hosted. Man, that, that was a huge, I, I, I feel for him. I mean, that was third down. Yeah. And you call pass interference on a bailout call, questionable if the ball was even catchable, and then even more questionable whether or not it was P.I. Tough, tough break. We'll see how the Panthers' defense will respond after that call. Jason Dumas once more bringing the pressure up the middle, but Harper continuing to elude defenders, and he gets a first down after that run, balked down by Drake Cheatham. Good for 13. Slow to go to the sideline is Darius Campbell. Now when you lose a safety, go after him. Campbell plays safety position for him. Backup comes off the bench a little cold. I'm saying they've had trouble defending the slot receivers for Alcorn State. They've got a numbers advantage now at the top of the screen. The handoff to Duffy and Jason Dumas, who has continued to be disruptive in this fourth quarter for the Panthers' defense. You know, we talk about him. They talk about he's a high-energy guy. And the explosiveness that they've told us about, we've seen it tonight in a couple plays where he's been unblockable off the line. They told us a really unique story about him. His father needed a kidney last year, and he was willing to give up one of his kidneys for a father. Thankfully, he was able to find donor recipient. Come on, more pressure coming through. This time, it's DePriest Taylor. And Taylor, out of Houston, Texas, ringing up the sack. Finally got to him. They've been trying to bring that backside pressure on him. And you'll see Taylor, 57. Missed block in the backfield by Nico Duffy. Leaves his quarterback vulnerable and exposed, and Taylor makes him pay for it. It's third down, and we're learning a lot about this Panthers defense here today. It feels like whatever questions some had, they're starting to grow up in a lot of areas here tonight. They're getting better. They need a third down stop right now. 19 the game for the Braves. Trying to get out in front of that one was Jalen Harris, incomplete. And Brings down. up fourth down. And it's been timely for them. I mean, you know, they've given up 38 points. So yeah. They're not going to win giving up 38 points, but this is a good all-form team, and the opportunities like this, when they need to get the football back and give their offense a chance to expand on their lead, they've done a good job of giving them that chance, keeping them in the game. McCullough out to punt. Mullins awaits on the other side. And some movement, flag on the field, and that'll push back all core in state five. Offense. Number 58, 
Down on Malik Holbert. This one gets away in Mullins. Bobbles it, juggles it, but holds on to it. 41-38, Prairie View A&M. Hear the name, remember it well, Dewanye Tucker. Got all the moves you need from a running back at this level. He can't control the size. He can control how he plays football, and he's so elusive, one of the best runners in all of FCS football. He's put on a clinic here tonight, and we said it earlier in the second half, Still don't feel like he's done. The best may still yet to come. Jalen Morton is being tracked by several defenders, and Solomon Muhammad is right there to track him down. Duanye Tucker, just how good has he been? Averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry to go with a couple of scores. And right now you have to know you're up by nine. It's too early to start milking the clock, but it's not too early to start force feeding the ball to Wanya Tucker. I'm telling Jalen Morton, if I call an RPO, you have to have a real good reason for not handing the football off to him. And Tucker just runs sideways and out of bounds. So if you're Prairie View A&M, you want to keep that clock moving, but more importantly, you want to go forward in the process and there was just nowhere to go for Tucker as the Braves defense played that well. Try to find one-on-one -on -one matchup with Tristan Wallace at the top of your screen. See, that's their first look. So right now, looks like he could have it. Go to him. There you go. He was eyeing him down the entire time and Morton finds Wallace. Sometimes being a quarterback, you can overcome that thing. But the way you make it easy is, okay, I'm gonna break the huddle, and if you've got one-on-one -on -one with my best receiver, I'm gonna go there. I'm not gonna worry about reading the other keys. I'm going there. Good job by Jalen Morton, realizing he had the one-on-one -on -one matchup he desired. Now look at the change. You see, you see the second guy? <laughs> then they bracket him up top. Holding on to it and hiding the football well was Morton finds Tony Mullins. And Mullins just steps out of the bounds near the 42-yard line. As Tony Mullins is one of those guys, leading receiver from the slot coming into today's game, and he's really given them an unexpected boost this season. He has, you know, you can get something to go along with the quarterback. They needed that complimentary piece to Christian Wallace because we see the double covers that Wallace commands, and Mullins has been that secondary receiver that's been a little pleasant surprise for him. Morton with the toss out to Tucker, and Tucker Makes one defender miss, another, and then he's wrapped up by Quinterio Cole. That's body control. It was a two or three yard run. But how exciting was it? I mean, he showed you the speed to the outside, made somebody miss, cut forward, got the first down. Good little football player. This is a time right here where you can try and, you know, we call it championship drop. If they can score right now on this drive, don't have to score in a hurry, then they can really put a lot of pressure on Alcorn and go a long way towards clinching this victory here on the road. Tucker will trot to the sideline. We've seen a good exchange back and forth as Caleb Roach has come in and carried some of the load with Tucker. Different play selection. When Broach is in there, it's more the straight ahead. They don't really run off tackle too much. Second and nine. Man in motion. The give to Broach and up the middle, like you mentioned, Jay. Michael Webb there to stop him. When I go unconventional here. The one play we know that Jalen Morton's pretty comfortable doing is that run pass option, the triple option, where he can either ride it with the running back keeping himself in run, or keeping himself and appear to run and throw the pass. There's always something brewing in the mind of Eric Dooley. We'll see what he comes up with here at third and five. Morton rolling out, and he's brought down! Big time play from Solomon Muhammad. The senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. 
coming up with a big time stop Huge on third stop. and five. What you have to do here, you got to get rid of it. You have to get rid of it. When they get a beat on you, get rid of the football. They trusted the senior quarterback to protect the football, but I'm not sure they anticipated him taking the sack. In a game like this, when it could come down to field position or field goal try, every yard counts. One of the best defenders in the SWAC. And this one bounces forward. Well, Solomon Muhammad, he's the preseason defensive player of the year, and perhaps for good reason. When you make plays like this, show me something. Back here in Lorman, Mississippi, Nico Duffy on the first down carry for the Braves. Just about a yard to gain to pick up the first down. And Duffy is stood up. I think it's for progress. We'll give him that first down. Jason Dumas, who has been all over the place from his defensive tackle position. This is going to shape up to be an interesting mm -hmm. finish. I mean, mm -hmm. Prairie View may have their worst nightmare. Their defense in a position to win the game late by making a stop. Alcorn, time for you to put together a nice time-consuming drive, get yourself in the least field goal position for the tie. But Smelling that pressure from the backside, nowhere to go. Guess who? Number 92, Jason Dumas. Dumas has elevated his game. And we've seen him grow up and become a one-man wrecking crew, winning his one-on-one -on -one matchups, using his explosiveness to become an impact player for this Panther defense. They just have not been able to slow down Jason Dumas. Such a versatile player for the Panthers. Here's Harper. And Harper stands it up tall for Tim McNair, and he goes to get it. And that's the curl route they've been doing. They run a seam route to clear it out, get the linebacker to turn his back, hit the curl route to make it third and a manageable four. You want your quarterback right here. Don't take a sack. In this situation, don't take a sack. If it's an incomplete pass, we still have the option of going for it on fourth down. But if you take a sack, you take it out of your coach's hands. You need the completion first, but you absolutely cannot afford a sack. Alcorn State 4-4-11 four, four, on third down, bringing pressure, but gets the ball away. And McNair once again in a penalty marker he is on the, on the field. They brought the pressure trying to get to him to force him to throw the ball earlier than anticipated. Looks like this penalty is going to be against... Alcorn State. The referee's looking towards the Prairie View sideline, asking if they want to accept the penalty. I think you absolutely do take the penalty in this case. Forty, offense number 77, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. It's third down. That's on Joseph Milburn, the center. Dumas <laughs> trying to block Dumas. I mean, Dumas has such a quick, explosive first step. Mm -hmm. Just a sophomore. Mm -hmm. be a good one. So that backs him up third and 15. Keep everything in front of you. Do not let anybody get behind you. Harper. Looking downfield, Harper delivers it. And who the sure-handed Pringle is right there to say, let's keep going, fellas. 21 yards on that third down pass. And the Braves keep it moving. Nico Duffy, however, with nowhere to go. Dumas and Darius Campbell was right there. Big time catch by Pringle, coming back to the football, holding on, pretty good coverage on him. <laughs> 
two and a half. Just under that to go here from the reservation. Alcorn State trailing in their SWAC opener against Prairie View A&M. Chris Blair was there. He had a step on his defender, and he just tripped on his way. Right there with him was Jalen Harris. The incidental contact, just going for him. Managed to get behind him, but at first glance, it didn't seem as if there was a push. He just tripped on his trip, yeah. Yep. Just tripped. So a timeout on the field. It's a crucial third and ten for Fred McNair and the Braves. And now that you have this extra time, what are you hoping that your offensive coordinator, Elliot Ratton, will call here? This is when you go to him and say, I don't need to pick it all up now. Right? Give me a, give me a third and medium package that you have. Your third and seven to ten yards, we call it. Because it's definitely four down territory. We'll step aside for a quick break here. Come back with us. You won't want to miss it. Well, Charles Pringle, the six-foot receiver out of Gaucher, Mississippi, coming up with key catches for the Braves. Third and ten, Nico Duffy continuing the spin, stays on his feet, picks up about six yards, and now it's fourth down, and you know the Braves are going for it as they're trailing. What a gutsy call, a call a pass behind the line of scrimmage where he could have been tackled, but a fantastic effort by Duffy to bail out his coach and pick up some yards. Well, all corn has won their last four home games. Meanwhile, Prairie View A&M trying to end a two-game losing streak. And the reception from Chris Blair to keep it going. Big catch there from Blair, good for 19 yards. And they set this play up with the previous call, so you're thinking they're going back to the flat. Instead, Blair sneaks behind the defensive back, kicking at the running back, coming out the backfield. Harper hesitated, and almost right there was Logan Jackson, who was blanketing the receiver and they brought the blitz defensive coordinator Henry Miller trying to get a blitz to force the Braves out of field goal range not able to get to the quarterback and you've got a couple Prairie View defenders down on the ground and just looking like they're you know cramping up right now as Dumas has been all over the place. Well, this would be a huge win for this Prairie View A&M team on the road against the defending SWAC champions. And you see there, their record against Alcorn, Grambling State, and Southern. They'll see those two teams next. An important minute and 25 remaining in this one. And it's been an exciting matchup ever since Prairie View a and came back and put seven points on the board after Alcorn State got out to a 17-0 lead. And Nico Duffy. Duffy with the strong carry on second down, brought down by Drake Cheatham and picked up a dozen there and it's a first down in field goal range now now I think you take a couple shots at the end zone instead they hand it off to Duffy and Duffy once more and he's tripped up just short of the goal line so running downhill is Nico Duffy they give it to him again Dumas couldn't get him but he's wrapped up quickly thereafter. You see the game of chess here. Who's gonna blink first and call timeout? Yeah, looks like all corn is. 
So Alcorn State spins their first time out of the second half. They've got two remaining. Prairie View A&M only has one. And the timeout here allows Prairie View to get a game plan together, right? Because right now, one play is going to determine. If Alcorn doesn't get the touchdown, you have to take the field goal, you would think. So what do you do in this case? And I think Prairie View has to stack the box. You have to play man-to-man -man coverage across the board, do your best run blitz you have, and your defensive backs are going to have to make a play for you one-on-one -on -one because you can't afford to have your safety sit back in the end zone. Corey McCullough warming up just in case he's needed. He missed a couple of field goals against McNeese last week. I look for a little rub route if you can. By the rub, I mean have somebody run a crossing pattern, maybe a little pick play, see if you can get somebody open in the flat. Basically, you're looking for is your best two-point conversion play that you have. Third and one. Keep an eye on number 82. He's been their go-to guy, the Charles Pringle. An obvious pass situation when they needed a big play. You see trips at the top of the screen. Pringle is in the middle of the receivers. Harper rolling to his right and finds his man! Tim McNair for the touchdown! Left-handed quarterback, they roll him to the right. And McNair just wide open in the back of the end zone. Breakdown on the communication of the defense. First touchdown of the season for Tim McNair. An all-important extra point to give the Braves a four-point advantage if it's good. And it is. So now, that forces Prairie View A&M, depending upon the kickoff return, to drive down the field, and they must score a touchdown in order to walk away with a win. So Tim McNair, you're gonna see McNair here at the top of this formation does a good job getting caught in the wash and gets lost. Outside perimeter, you have to know where he is. You keep him in front of you. Peaks in the backfield. That guy's covered. You left somebody open. That's a blown assignment by Logan Jackson, number 31, that allowed Alcorn to score the go-ahead touchdown. And an important drive there because that's the kind of championship drive you're looking to see to close out a SWAC opponent in a big game like this. 14 plays, the Braves went 65 yards in four minutes and 40 seconds. But there's a chance for Eric Dooley and Prairie View A&M. 40 seconds to go. And the touchback. So now you've got under a minute to work with. Oh, and a penalty marker comes out just near the 30 yard line near side. After the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the kicking team, number 35. 15-yard penalty added on to the end of the run. First down. That goes against Nichelle Heron, and that is a costly penalty for the Braves. They get the ball on the 40-yard line. My that ball goodness. went out of the end zone, so they would have gotten it on the 25. 25. Now they're going to get it on the 40. And with Morton's arm strength, he could... You can see if we do a couple throws into the end zone on the Hail Mary, worst case scenario. 
And you've got to think he's going to be looking for number 11, Tristan Wallace. There he goes on the outside. Gets out of bounds and near the first down marker. Here we go again quickly. This time inside to Tony Mullins and Mullins is wrapped up around the ankles by Cole. And from the kids, did he not get the first down? I see the, the chains yeah, moving, yeah, yeah. so now you don't get the first down. You got to tell guys go down right away. Fox, not their friend. You gotta get they've the got to move. Now. They've got to. They're they're wasting time. About six or seven seconds have gone off, and it looked like Wallace's hand, excuse me, Morton's hand was deflected on that pass. Creo argue may have gotten a hand on it. Wow, I just have to think when you complete that short pass, there should have been a sense of urgency to get up to the line of scrimmage. And now with eight seconds to go, you can I go mean, over what, the what middle the deep. You can go over the middle deep because you still have a timeout there. So I try and hit a crossing route, second level. Morton going for it. Nobody there. And does the time run out? Here's the question. And the Braves running out onto the field, but the officials are saying, hold up. Some confusion. I thought there may have been one on. second to go. There should be two seconds left on the game clock. Two seconds. So Prairie View A&M has one more chance with two seconds to go. Let's see how it runs off here. Yeah, I mean, very fortunate that ball hits. Yeah, yeah. out of play. Yep. And that's the thing I was wondering, like, you don't want to end the game this close with having a timeout. I thought they had an opportunity to hit a crossing route deep to get in better position. A little surprised at the lack of productivity on this drive here, given the situation and the circumstance. Red McNair, you think he's proud of his team? I mean, Waller out, Noah Johnson, the quarterback out, and to put up 45 points, be in a position of walking away with a victory here at home. It would be their first conference win of the season if they can hold on here. The offensive line has to hold up. You have to block. Give them some time. Cole coming off the edge and dropped, and that does it. And all Corn State holds on, proving they are still the team to beat in the SWAC. Whoo, what a way to start conference play. <laughs> right? The SWAC may be swacky this year. Well fought contest, physical game. And as you said, the folks here at the Cone, they still the team to beat. And you just have a feeling this could be a rematch. Yeah. You could very well see these two teams playing for the SWAC championship, and I would definitely come see it. <laughs> it's, uh, what an effort. Prairie View A&M, look, they fought from 17 down after that first quarter to make it more than just a ball game. This was one that you just couldn't take your eyes off of, but Alcorn State saw some big performances. Nico Duffy stepping up. Felix Harper coming through. LaCharles Pringle said, give me some of that attention too. Alcorn State moves to two and two on the season and they win by four in their SWAC opener.